John Deere will change the way you mow with easy-to-use attachments, effortless steering, and intuitive controls. Right now, save up to $700 on X300, X500, and X700 series mowers. Learn more at qualityequip.com and get quality done right. Offer ends 10 21 Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. At Jimmy John's, we don't make sandwiches. We make the sandwich of sandwiches. We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. Okay, let's just try not to embarrass ourselves and everything will be fine. <laughs> yeah, sure, totally. Is that a Pepsi Wild Cherry? Oh, uh, no. Please, not here. Not, not here. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> you know something, Steve? Flavor Mania is about to run wild. Oh, not Flavor Mania. <laughs> Pepsi Wild Cherry is about to drop a flavor suplex right into your pie hole. Not the pie it's going to hit your taste buds with a top row elbow of flavor. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be refreshing. It's going to throw your wild cherry loving brain right through the announcer's table. Oh, I can't take you anywhere. Flavor Mania doesn't need your permission, Steve, because the world knows that nothing is going to get between Pepsi. Pepsi Wild Cherry and that Flavor Championship belt. Are you ready to get wild? Oh, please don't, don't Come get on, wild. Come on, Steve. I said, <sighs> are you ready to get wild? Seriously, does this always have to happen when you drink Pepsi Wild Cherry? You better believe it, brother. Pepsi Wild Cherry. Now available in zero sugar. That's what I like. Do you find yourself hungry, but looking for some new and different options? Then the Bodega Market Cafe in Uptown Greenville is for you. They offer a full-service menu featuring breakfast, lunch, and dinner, also with a variety of unique vegan selections. Dine in or sit outside in their great outdoor dining area. Plus, they're always ready for pickup or delivery. Open 24-7 for your convenience. The Bodega Market Cafe, located in Uptown Greenville, across from the BB&T. For years, Callie Ann Phelps has been singing about Phelps Chevrolet. Phelps Chevrolet is the one for you. Low, low prices, service too. See the big dealer right away. Carolina's finest, Phelps Chevrolet. And you'll agree with what Skylar Phelps has to say. Nobody needs Phelps Chevrolet's prices. Nobody. The name you can depend on. Phelps Chevrolet. Get you on. Find new roads with Chevrolet. Then come find yours at Phelps Chevrolet in Greenville. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Welcome to Pirate Radio Live. You can paint this with purple! Now live from the Pirate Radio Studios in the heart of the Pirate Nation, here is your host, Clip Brock. Hello everyone, welcome in to a Friday edition of Pirate Radio Live. Clip Brock here inside the Pirate Radio Studios and coming to you today on Pirate Radio 92.7 FM in Greenville, 104.1 in Washington. We are on 1250-930. You can find us online, pr927fm.com. And you can watch the program on Facebook Live and on YouTube. Got a lot of great videos up on our YouTube page right now. You can check out Pirate Radio Trivia. You can check out the Pirate Radio Podcast. Had a new episode drop this week with Brian Medor, Billy Weaver, Double B Brian Bailey, and Troy D, a press box edition of the Pirate Radio Podcast. You can watch that right now on YouTube and on Facebook. Thanks for joining in today. Man, we got a great show for you. Uh, In the 5 o'clock hour, we're going to talk to a couple of guys who pitched last weekend in the Super Regional in Nashville. Matt Bridges and Cam Colmore. The guys will join us here inside the Pirate Radio studio. So looking forward to talking about their careers here at ECU and what is next for Bridges and Colmore. Also, if you missed the news of the day, just yesterday on the show, sitting in the chair right beside me, which Tony Dunn is in right now, Corey Gore joined us. Surf! Surf. And now, Corey Gore is leaving us. Surf. Corey Gore is taking over the play-by-play duties. 
for football, basketball, and baseball at Tulane. He is headed south, and he will join us on the program in the 5 o'clock hour to uh, to say goodbye forever. Kind of sad. I know Chandler's sad. Chandler, you okay? You going to be able to get through the show? Yeah, I'm good. I'm fine. We will definitely miss Corey Glore. He's a uh, great guy, did a great job. Uh, with the baseball broadcast over the years and uh, as I, I will talk to him but the greatest thing he did during broadcast was interact with the fans I thought he was fantastic doing that so we'll talk to Corey uh, in the 5 o'clock hour 4 o'clock hour we'll get a US Open update with Greeny Mark Greenheld from the Golf Shop Radio Show uh, also Morgan Aylers voice of Dowdy Ficklin Stadium and Minji's Coliseum will join us in the 4 o'clock hour as well we have a giveaway today Free Beer Friday? Free Beer Friday. Free Beer Friday. So uh, we'll make you a winner. More details on that coming up momentarily. And Tony Dunn joins us right now inside the Pirate Radio Studios. Hello, Tony. Waiting patiently. Yeah, you are very well behaved. I do I do not like my guests to talk until they're introduced. Good God. And you gave me a lot of nods. You were talking with your face a little bit. It was. Good. Uh, <laughs> great show until we get to the 3 o'clock hour where it's just a good show. Uh, that's uh, just Tony Dunn. Ah, just this dude. Nah, uh, good to be here. Hot out there. It is a hot one. It is, uh, it is hot indeed. And... Uh, Football players are out on the football field, Tony. Mini camps and it's starting to wrap up, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of another. We're about to enter another calm before the storm period, where literally nothing happens. So, uh, do have a few NFL news and notes to talk about. Um, Robert says Corey Glor to the portal. To the portal, yeah. Uh, Bradley says there is no video. Susan says, is there a problem with the picture on Facebook Ooh. Live? got to change screen and i think i know what the problem is because shirley didn't switch it over so shirley's leaving next week you're leaving too she'll be back no 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 no. i'm I'm not going to (laughs) she's joining two lane live (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's new orleans right yeah that is new orleans why don't we all go to two lane then oh here comes the boss man right now we're out of here bro (laughs) we're going to two lane we're entering the portal (laughs) Uh, so Shirley is teaching Chandler how to do the audio production of Pirate Radio Live. Mm-hmm. And I am doing the video production. Yeah. And, and there I was did no a video. <laughs> no. Well, there was video, <laughs> but no one told uh, her. <laughs> our great hourly sponsor, Griffles by Matt USA, was showing up. We could hear you guys' voice. Look at this but, pro. Uh, I know. Don't he worry, sounds like a regular NASCAR driver over here. Yeah, he's got all the sponsors. Well done. Well uh, done. Good news for Chandler is that uh, sad news, Corey Glore's leaving, but good news is you get to learn a new voice. That is true. The replacement. Yeah. And now you've got to, as soon as it hits the news, we'll who see. we get, we're going to start researching him, and here, you're going to start practicing. Here's the good thing about Corey going to Tulane is that we'll see more of Corey. We'll not maybe see him, but we'll hear a lot more of him when we play Tulane in football. He'll the, come on he, the show. He, 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 he's the voice for football, basketball, and baseball at Tulane, and also the director of broadcasting. So we'll hear a lot more from Corey Woolworth, but it'll be on the other side. He's going to be a busy boy. And we, uh, <laughs> this is kind of funny. We're, just next week, we're starting our ECU opponent previews. Uh, we got Steve Cotton, play by play voice of Marshall, coming up on Tuesday, but we're going to talk to. Someone from App State, South Carolina, Charleston Southern. Week five, Tony. We're going to talk to Corey Glory. <laughs> wow, that is so weird. The voice of the Tulane Green Wave going to tell us everything we need to know about Tulane football, <laughs> which right now he knows nothing about. He's I was probably, hard. I was going to say people are probably telling him all he needs to know. Yeah, he probably needs to learn you know more about the university and the athletic department. I think he department. should change his name, like his dad. Oh, I got. I was. I was. Yeah. I was listening to the show yesterday. I hope that the podcast was all the reveal of Brian Bailey, all these guys' real names. Oh yeah, that would have been cool. The mask. They pull the mask off. Yeah, that's great. We all need to have fake real names that we uh, we tell the world. Um, we have an idea for who should be the next play by play voice for ECU baseball. Do you have that pulled up, Chandler? I do. Do you? It's two minutes and forty nine seconds. Do you want to run the whole thing? Just or? hit it for a little while. Okay. Just uh, Here listen is. to this guy, Tony. This is who should be the next voice of ECU baseball. Good morning, Andy Gannon here in Rockton, site of the major Chem to 
actual fire just behind me here, about a quarter mile away. Uh, this fire has been burning now for going on two hours. Oh, that is creepy. That is Corey so Gore's weird. dad that guy. should be the next voice of ECU Ash baseball. Been, uh, he should just trail his son. Yeah, wherever he goes. Yeah. For the last few hours. Rockford, Illinois. Rockford, Illinois. Driveways. As well as the lawns this morning, and as you can see, the smoke has been. <laughs> like, you can tell, listen to this, that Corey is not faking his voice. No, he's he not. got it completely honest. All right, you can hit, uh, you can cut Mr. Glore, who goes by a different name. Look, he's just grinning, listening to it. I was thinking we should get the Tennessee Titans guy. <laughs> Corey's tuned into us right now, by the way. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, the Tennessee Titans guy? Chandler. What would that sound like if Thomas Francisco hit a home run? Here's the pitch. High fly ball. Deep center field. It's a home run. Pilots. <laughs> well done. His name is Keith. Uh, Mike Keith. Mike Keith. We you have know, no I, idea what his real name is. So. No way it's Mike Keith. <laughs> no, after learning certain names that are not their names, I'm, like, I, I, don't, I don't believe trust, anybody in the media world. I it, don't trust anybody. My name's not Chella Honeycutt. No. Yeah. <laughs> My name is not Shirley Rhodes. I heard that you wanted to change it. Someone wanted you to, make you to change it. Yeah. That's messed up. <laughs> Shirley Rhodes. What's so hard about hearing I know. That you said it was hard to say. I thought that, it was that's, what, that's what I was told initially when I first got into the business. Clip Brock, we're going to need you to change your name because we don't know if it's Chip Rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sounds a little too much. I had that discussion with Troy many, many years ago. Like, Clip is such a weird name. Maybe you should go by something else. I was like, nah. Is that real? I'm good. Yeah, that's good. That's real. Mm. Uh, Susan says three o'clock hour is the best on Fridays. Nice. Thank now you. she's a little biased because she is a Panthers fan. And and she we'll likes me. Panthers thank you, football. Susan. And she likes Tony and Chandler <laughs> and me and Charlie and everybody. Too. She likes everybody. She was our winner yesterday of our forty dollars gift card to Familia. Oh, nice. Uh, I've got some news. I told this oh, to God. Tony <laughs> on Wednesday at Sports Trivia, and Tony, he he physically he made a face and walked away. <laughs> And oh wow! He walked away, shaking his head, and came back to me, and and he was very distraught. Did you see that former Panthers linebacker Luke Keekley was brought in by Ron Rivera to talk to the Washington Football Team linebackers? I did not. <laughs> that is news to me. Fake you, news. How do you, that's this real news. news. How do you feel about that, Chandler? How do you feel about it, Tony? Unless he's in there talking about how vaccines could help them get to the protocols, I'm upset. So is this a uh, Montez Sweat reference there? I don't think it has anything to do with coaching. I think it's just to go in there and show them. Don't look at me like that clip. No. You're not taking you Luke. say how I'm looking at you. Who? You. Me? Yeah, because I... What do you mean you don't think this has anything to do with coaching? Anything. This is... <clears throat> can't help it. I think I'm it's just him. bringing in one of the best linebackers that Ron Rivera's ever coached. Yeah, he's, he's part of our, our franchise now. No, he's not. He no. is more he's part more of part of. It yes. doesn't make me mad, but it, it, make, me it makes mad. me feel weird. Yeah, I want you to feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> I want y'all to what be It males? makes me feel weird, just like that we're about to talk to Corey Glore in a few weeks about Tulane football. That's going right. to be weird. What upsets me about this, and it's not that it's like mad, I don't know if that's the right emotion, but there's some sort of anxiety that comes with it, <laughs> is that Ron Rivera leaves, he's fired, right? All of a sudden, you know, you you're starting to wonder about who's going to come in. Matt Rule's hired about two weeks into the Matt Rule hire, and they're bringing that staff. Luke Keekley says, "Screw this, I'm retiring." Right, and then he goes into the scouting department. And you're like, "Oh man," because we were all wanting him to be a linebackers coach. We were like, "Oh, he," was, and R Matt Rule was like, "We would and make love, his and make his way up." Yeah, we would love for him to be part of that. You know, we respect all that. Then. That didn't happen, but he entered the scouting department. And you're like, man, this is even, this is real cool, too. He loves film. He's a film junkie. He's going to move up in the personnel department. He's going to be the next Dan Morgan. Oh, this is bad, too. And then His reason for leaving scouting. He retired. He missed fishing too much. It's like a Bryce Williams quote. I think a lot of people know I like the outdoors and I like to hunt and fish. And a lot of that has to do with the fall. It's hard to do both. He left a job in his passion to go hunt and fish. Yes. But when now he's going to be in wait a month, he's going to be the new assistant linebackers coach for the Washington football team. And you know what Tony's biggest fear is? Luke Keekley strapping it on one more time and playing for the Washington football team. Are you saying a that top defense? 
What you were saying earlier, do you think the new regime in Carolina is what forced him out? That's my hidden fear. There's the anxiety. I don't think forced out. What if he just didn't want to be a part of it? He probably... And, and what if he just didn't like it? He looked around and was like, wait, I don't know any of these people. I didn't play with them. I and why am I grinding? I'm a millionaire doing this scout life. I mean, he should have just started as a coach. He now, I'm not going to get mad until he has some sort of personal relationship with the Washington football team. You mean team. like speaking to their linebackers? That <laughs> I think that's happened. No, no, I think that's a personal relationship with the head coach that he had for eight years in the NFL. <laughs> I think that this has is nothing all to I do. Want. Uh, Tony to get upset, Chandler to start making excuses. Everything's melting down, and I love it. I'm just in look. better news. Steve Smith's going to be doing the preseason play yes. up, uh, color commentary for the Carolina Panthers, which I think is a positive story for the Panthers. I saw. And the reason I like this is that Steve Smith, I think, is the first Panther. You'll know this better than me, Click, because you know all the names. Who is there a? Who is the Panther that's been in the media before? And why are you making that? I was like, what is that noise? Did you blow it? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Mike Rucker well, has been Well, first of all, yeah. Was. Rucker like on and a Rock, national Eugene, stage. But yeah, yeah. Donnelly or whatever his name no, is. No, no. I was thinking maybe Steve Berline had done something. I'm not sure if that's even true. The, what I like about this storyline is Steve Smith has gone into, he's worked at NFL w- w- Network. Now he's kind of gone back to the team and he's reestablishing that kind of relationship but i think it finally signals this is the panthers are starting to get old enough that we have a, we're starting to have a legacy a voice in a the legacy yeah, yeah because like michael irvin you, when you think about him on what is he espn nfl oh, network discussing Aikman, irvin emmett that, right but Witten, like you romo think of dallas in their history they all, yeah. it's all attached to it and that is cool that the panthers are finally starting to get a history now, yeah, it's going to be know? like that with greg olson who's going to be in the yep. booth yep uh steve smith like so is smith be- still with nfl network Yes. Yeah. And I think he only signed on to do the preseason game. Yeah, yeah. Right it's now. just preseason. Because those are on television on local TV, so he'll do those games. Uh, Robert says Jordan Gross. What did he do? He's like a sideline reporter, I yeah, think, for but the these radio. Are all for the team. These I, are local. Yeah, I think that part, the exciting part is that Nash, you know, he's part of the national media that is Hate. forming the relationship back with Carolina. I just can't wait to see like Greg Olson on Monday Night Football or Steve Smith on sun, on the table. You know, it just makes me feel like the Panthers are starting to become not the baby franchise, but have a legacy. When I, Whenever I see Steve Smith on NFL Network, it makes me feel so proud, especially they get him involved with the the combine, when they cover the combine. Oh, and he's, pretty, and he's, he's on the good. field with these players. And a lot of these players are like, man, I looked up to you, and I'm like, he was a Panther. Yeah. And, and like we're starting, about, finally getting that. You talked about Keekly with this current regime, and you know, I don't know any of these guys, and, and uh, I'm out. How about Smith with the previous regime was an outcast yes. and would not even speak to anybody there, and now he is back in the good graces of everybody in Charlotte. That was kind of a quick turnaround. Well, maybe not quick, Change in nah, man- but a dramatic turnaround. You know, as though there is a different regime for Steve Smith. It's just the one that's in the locker room is not the one he had the problem with. You know, I don't think he had necessarily... Right, yeah, yeah. You know, he it was turns upper, out that yeah. the new regime is a new owner, and, also, and more so the GM, because Jerry, he loves him, Jerry Richardson, and Jerry Richardson yeah. loves him, or loved him, and that's so... Tepper coming in, who has been very, very hands on. I got to tell yes. you that is that when we watched the Panthers Confidential, the the thing that kind of intrigued me the most is how him in the war room just being part of everything, the yeah. preparation part. So he is not a owner that is a sign like Jerry Richardson was. Uh, but now Dave Gettleman's moved on. He's making people mad in a different city at this point. Well, Dave, David Tepper, the first I feel like one of the first things he wanted to do was kind of restructure these relationships with these former Panthers like Steve Smith. D'Angelo Williams had a bad breakup with us. And he can stay on Jonathan, that breakup. I don't care about he's him. He's on your list. He's and, on and, the list. And Jonathan Stewart as well. I think he did a good job of having them uh, come in and do some things with our social media team, like Jonathan Stewart is an example. Ooh. Um, Bad miss there. Sorry. But he just wanted to – I think he wanted to restructure this relationship. And one of the things he did was, you know, do the Hall of Honor. And he had Jake Dahl, yeah. Wesley Walls, Steve Smith, and then Jordan Gross as well. I think for 
for Steve Smith, though, this was expected. Steve Smith is one of those hotheads that he was going to flip out no matter what, and it's going to take him two or three, and then he's going to come. Then he realized, wait a second, this is a money-making opportunity. This is an opportunity. This is a relationship I really do care about. So you know he was going to come back at some point. He'll probably get upset again about something and. Yeah, I don't think back, it'll you know. be. Yeah, hopefully it won't be with us. Yeah. Or that he'll be upset with somebody else. Did we talk to you about the Angela Williams? He's too busy on social media. Tony's not a fan. Uh, do you like D'Angelo Williams? Yes, he does. You, you like him all right, right? I mean, why would I hate him? He likes everybody. Well, because he wears footy pajamas and hates Panther fans. How about that? Wait, he that hates every, like me. He hates everybody <laughs> that talks crap to him on social that media. That sounds like me. Footy pajamas, hates Panthers fans. You're describing Now he's lying. he's lying. I thought we were friends, man. <laughs> nope, not anymore. Uh, <laughs> no, Chandler likes everybody. Tony uh, hates every former Panther. <laughs> that is not true. But Did we talk about the uh, David Tepper stuff last week? I think week? we did a okay. little bit. All right. Oh, have we talked about Mick, Mick Mixon's last year uh, behind the mic? I think that was two weeks ago. Tony right. Dunn, the bathing suit fabric shorts here today my bathing suit. with his ponytail pulled tight pulled tightly around his head the as details there bends was the- over and the wind whisks through the tail <laughs> Was, Didn't he like to talk about Ron Rivera's It was uh, always chest, this, his or, arms folded over his ample chest. <laughs> ample <laughs> ample <laughs> chest. He yeah. writes like erotic novella, yeah. novella while Which, doing the do game. Do you know there are these that are all based on sports stars? Like you can go buy them on Amazon for like two bucks. Like there are adult like, like, yeah, erotic like, sports? Like kind of, yeah, for, I would assume they're for women, but that kind of just trash read yeah, yeah there was one on cam there, there's a cam one what and we bought i bought it and i, <laughs> no I, used, to, I used to read passages out of it on the show don't touch me with that hand <laughs> <laughs> i met mick nixon that, is, that way there's Hold a on, bunch somebody. of them man well uh, uh, at the break i'll show you there's it, a bunch of them like for any new star that comes out somebody will ch- uh, like pound, <laughs> pound out this novel in a day and a half Jeez. you read this that's parts of it you can read it in like an hour. It's like a trash, like it's a real trash read. And it's most, about a woman who gets lost in the stadium. And if you're thinking Tony wanted to be Cam in the story, no, he uh. wanted to be the woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, Chandler, any thoughts on that? No, but I, <laughs> none at all. But I did meet Mick Mixon in January of 2018 in North Myrtle Beach at a Starbucks. And the wind was blowing <laughs> briskly in from north to south, uh, and <laughs> this, the barista <laughs> steaming the coffee in the back. Tony right. Cud uh, slurps his coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we will with a gentle sip. Take a timeout and return more with We're Tony Dunn. In trouble with the boss man, probably. Can't cry. I am fascinated by. I didn't know that they had like real people in the stories. How is that even legal? I think that like they just call him Cam. <laughs> I'll show it to you. I think I, I bought nice. it, so it should be in my Kindle library. Can you bring it in uh, next week? Oh, it's like it's electronic. Yeah, gotcha. All right, we'll uh, have more for you on Pirate Radio Live here on a Free Beer Friday. Stick around. Big Hour Three with Matt Bridges, Cam Colmore, Corey Glor, and a giveaway. Back with you after this. Hey, Pirate fans, this is Cliff Godwin. Summer is here, and I want to invite your son to attend Cliff Godwin Youth Camps. We will offer three sessions the weeks of June 28th, July 12th, and July 26th. All camps will be held at Clark LeClaire Stadium, and campers will get baseball instruction from members of the 2021 ECU baseball team. Campers will also play games, and each camp ends with our famous Pirate Slip and Slide. Full day and half day sessions are offered. For more information, visit CliffGodwinBaseballCamp.com. See you there. Go Pirates. Hey, Birdland, Orioles 2021 single-game tickets are on sale now for all games June through September at Orioles.com slash tickets. Single-game options are flexible and affordable with individual tickets starting as low as $15. You can choose from popular promo dates and fan-favorite giveaways, including bobbleheads, T-shirts, caps, and more. Simply select your dates and purchase tickets now at Orioles.com slash tickets. That's single-game tickets as low as $15. Available to all fans now at Orioles.com slash tickets. 
Hello, this is Talbot Green with Angel Oak Home Loans. Now is the time to take advantage of the opportunity to buy more home or refinance your current mortgage at historically low rates. The combination of our local team's experience and Angel Oak's wide offerings of products from standard conventional, government, and portfolio loans has something for most financial situations. For more information, call Talbot Green, Joanne Weir, or Wanda Hager at 751-2060. NMLS 1719250, Equal Housing Lender. Here with Melissa from ENS Hemp Company. Melissa, tell us how your products and services can help people. Well, for over two and a half years, the team at ENS Hemp Company has been helping educate our community on the many benefits of our products. Our customers have seen great success dealing with everything from stress, anxiety, fatigue, pain, and PTSD, just to name a few. You can come in today and our staff can help you find the best products for your needs. You can visit us at Fire Tower Road near Sam Jones Barbecue or enshempcompany.com. There's no better time to drive away with a quality pre-owned car, truck, or SUV from Greenville Auto World. Greenville Auto World is your authorized rough country dealer. We specialize in lift and leveling kits along with custom wheel packages. Whether you're looking for ground clearance or enhancing the appearance of your vehicle, trust our team for your off-road experience. Greenville Auto World, 3840 South Charles Boulevard across from Hardy's at Bell's Fork or online at greenvilleautoworld.net. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is proud ECU graduate and former baseball player Brandon Manning inviting you to join my team at Farm Bureau Insurance. Right now is a good time to review your coverage with a local trusted agent like me. I will make myself available before or after business hours, and my clients always have my cell phone number if they need anything. From home, auto, or life, give me a call today and let's talk about your insurance coverage and about the Pirates. Call 531-1812 and go Pirates! University PC Care has been the Pirate Nation's go-to IT expert since 2006. They thank you for your continued support and trust during these trying times. Many services can be done remotely and free pickup and delivery is available. As a Dell business partner and Apple authorized service provider, you can count on University PC Care for all your personal and business tech support needs. To make a remote appointment or to bring in your device for service at their Greenville or New Bern locations, call 558-1280 or go online at universitypccare.com. This is Steven Igo. You've heard from me plenty on Pirate Radio Live and perhaps have read some of my work on hoistthecolors.net. Now, get an extension of our in-depth coverage on the Hoist the Colors podcast. From game previews to immediate post-game analysis to emergency podcasts for breaking news, we've got you covered. A cast of guest co-hosts from fans, former coaches, and other writers join me for two podcasts weekly to break down all things ECU athletics. Subscribe to Hoist the Colors now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. Pirate Radio. ECU. Pirates. Can't nobody do what What we do. do. You know. That's That's right. right. All right then. Yeah. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. Save lives, be a hero, and make $1,000 your very first month donating plasma at Griffles Biomat USA. Start now at Biomat USA on 505 South Memorial Drive. A better donor experience and better pay. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Summer vacation spots are right here in our very own backyard. Take a trip to a state park and enjoy traditional camping, RV space, and also air-conditioned cabins that can be rented with Wi-Fi. If you're by a lake, be sure to check out the opportunities to rent a a canoe, a canoe I should say, or kayak and get on the water. Your next adventure is right around the corner. For more information, please visit ncparks.gov. Now let's go back into the show. Here's your host, (laughs) Cliff (laughs) Rock. Whoa! Spelling bee champ. I am not the uh, pronunciation champ. Well, and you got me. (laughs) A canoe? What's the canoe? Robinson Canoe. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who's a fan of parks? Robinson Canoe. Oh, me. That's uh, my fault. The face you made when you said that, and was like, what did I just read? No, he I looked at canoe. Like, I said canoe. canoe. <laughs> What's a canoe? In fact, if, you, if we were doing the um, spelling stuff earlier in the week and you asked me to spell can- canoe, I would not spell it like this. <laughs> C-A-N-O-E. Yes, yes, that's Taylor. how it's spelled. I know, I know. Um, I knew, I knew. Uh, by um, the time we get out of here today, 
We'll do a little Tony Don Panther spelling bee. Oh, nice. Oh, God. God. Let's see if he can spell Musa Muhammad. No. That's the one I was going to do, actually. M- Musa Muhammad's first name. Uh, Clip, I do have some information concerning the college football playoff expansion. Is this about the Pac-12 being complete cowards? No. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have that for you after this. Uh, well, it may or may not, but this is what it says. The proposal to expand the playoffs to 12 teams is moving forward as the management committee agreed today to present the concept to the 11 university presidents and chancellors who have the ultimate authority over the format at a meeting earlier this week in Dallas. Um, of course, it's made up by the 10, the committee is made up of uh, by the 10 FBS commissioners and Notre Dame athletic director Jack Swarbrick. And it will ask the presidents and the chancellors to authorize the solicitation of feedback, which basically means we're going to present you a proposal and you just tell us it's okay to go forward? Well, not everybody thinks it's okay to go forward as is. Because today, the complete cowards from the Pac-12 released a statement, Commissioner Larry Scott. The Pac-12 supports expansion of the college football playoffs. All right, that's a good start. But here's where it turns. And believes the Autonomy 5 champions should annually qualify for the college football playoff. The Autonomy 5, which would he is saying SEC, Big Ten, Big 12, ACC, and Pac-12 should have their champion in no matter how crappy they are in the regular season. No matter what they're ranked, they deserve it just because of I don't know why. Because because they, no one else does. You don't you don't have to earn it. You are just given the right to uh, to be in this playoff. So Tony, I don't know how much you've been following this. The proposal is 12 team playoff. The top six ranked conference champions get an automatic bid that could be everybody but the pac 12 and the aac and the uh the mac you know mountain west whatever he is saying that wait 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 it just because cincinnati and coastal carolina is better than our best team doesn't mean they should get an automatic spot we should because we're the Pac-12. Welcome to our problem, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that like it, this yeah. is our problem? Like, and you just to think you're not part of it. This like, is you, not fair at all. <laughs> like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, you're right. This is exactly what these other schools have been going through all these years. So he says, uh, we greatly appreciate the work of the sub. Well, who cares what else they say? The autonomy five. Uh, what is that? Is, yeah, I know. It just, uh, I mean. Is that supposed to be the power five? I really, right. Is he considering himself part of a club he's not in? <laughs> is that what he is? Is he's like, We're, I'm part of this cool club, and it just turns out he's really well, not? Well, they've been in the cool club, but they've been the uh, the lamest member of that cool club. And now they're trying to keep their cool club credentials. Status, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's getting revoked, buddy. <laughs> it is. And, uh, yeah, what a lame, cowardly comment from larry scott we we believe the autonomy five champion should annually qualify for the college football playoff well that's what the whole point is is that we you know and maybe you could do how many conferences are there i'm sure there's a ton uh well uh well there's a group of five and power five so i guess 10 and then there's independence so the the whole point is in football is that, there's 10 uh, and basketball there's a lot more that yeah. conferences are underrepresented the smaller ones Right, um, or that they don't really have a chance of being represented. That's the thing: is that how does a middling school turn into a power school if you can't get recruits? Because with, you don't have an because you don't ever have. But if you put together a great squad, you can move up. You know, you want to get the opportunity, but if you're on the outside looking in, and that's welcome to our problem. And you know, there's kind of a, it's a strange thing when you think that man, the BCS was better than what they have now. You know, do you remember we used to complain about the BCS so much? Well, it's gotten better during our lifetimes, Tony, because it used to be they would just go to bowl games, and after the bowl games, you decide who the champion right. is. There was no championship. Then they go BCS, then they go playoff, and now expanded playoff. It's it's taking a lifetime, a generation, to make it to at make least a little bit better. incremental steps yeah, better. Yeah, very small steps. You know, and uh, one of the things that is interesting is that we talked a little bit about the this on the podcast because 
one of the guys on the show is a big college football fan, but specifically he's a Clemson fan. And you probably don't like this. No, and and there and it's interesting to hear their perspective because they think it's going to water down what is ultimately great football. But then when they hear the small school perspective, which is like, how can we enter the conversation of being a better school when you don't ever get, you're never going to be able to get top recruits that way. You know, and, and that is the, and isn't that kind of the beauty of the, uh, of the basketball bracket? Yeah, yeah. Right? The upsets, that, the little guy. And, and you know, and no one really expects the 16 to, to to climb that much but it's a great story when it happens and there is a shot it's not even to me about the end game it's about entering the season knowing you have an opportunity to play for a national championship when in previous years ecu's the best thing they could do is win a conference title and go to a better bowl than they would have the liberty bowl or like Cincinnati last year, whatever they were in Fiesta Orange, and that's great. But what are the it, that, those bowls are exhibition games? If you win, you don't advance to anything. The winner and the loser go home and get ready for next year. Heck, and the greatest players are starting to sit out of even the championship stuff. Well, almost. I mean, we, like, well, we haven't, I guess, seen it since. But when, well, like uh, last year, we saw um, what's the the Waddle, the Jalen Waddle. Um, he came back for the championship. So I. I mean, I think this entices players to keep playing and not sit out of a meaningless bowl game. And to build a a group of men that maybe in four years can become something special, you know, instead of, oh, well, I'm going to play two years and maybe if I get an offer from, you know, Arkansas, I'm going to run over there. Yeah, because I have a chance to play for something more meaningful than the uh, Beefo Brady's Bowl. I don't know what the answer and the solution is or what the magic number is, right, is adding more football, these things. I mean, there are merits to, you know, having too many teams or something to that effect, but if you could have that committee that you get the six, like you said, top six, and then there's some other, you know, they can, I guess, look at a team. What is it? Was it UCF that was? Cincinnati last year was like eighth. Okay. What and are you talking about? UCF when they when went they, undefeated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Years and ago. they could look at that team and say, you know what, this is a, normally this team, if they were a nine-win team, we wouldn't even care, even if they won their conference championship. Sure. But this is a different type of level of team. They deserve, for the year they've had, undefeated, deserve to play for a championship. And I, I'm not going to, um, I don't know, maybe this just sounds like me being the small guy, poo-pooing the guy that's always winning, but it is the same four or five teams every year. Well, it's Clemson, it's Bama, it's Ohio State, and then kind of rotate between Oklahoma, Notre Dame, and insert other SEC teams. And then in LSU. 10 years, it'll be five teams. That might They might be different, but it's still the same five powerhouse teams. And like until Saban quits, it's always going to be yeah. Alabama. And it's not going to be that way forever. You're right, because when we were younger, it was Clemson Florida State, wasn't good. Right? And, and Alabama has had bad years before Saban got there. But like Florida State, they Nebraska. They dominated the 90s, 90s. Yeah, yeah. Miami, yeah. you know. And so, but there are this group. And you just want to see... An, another team that is very good have an opportunity to play. There you go. And uh, that is, you know, that's why we like uh, the NFL, right? The parody. Because you don't, you could stink one year and be good the next. I mean, Panthers fans would know about that because you've never had back to back winning seasons in the entire no, we franchise. Have not, but we have won three division championships in a row. Yeah. Still. Figure that out. Yeah. Uh, uh, and one uh, with a 7 8 and 1 record. <laughs> Some people say this is why the hockey playoffs are so great. Is because the the difference between the top teams and yes. even the six seed is not as great as you know. It's kind of an any given series type mentality. Yeah. All right. Uh, Speaking of hockey, the Islanders lost last Islanders. night to the Lightning and down two to one. All right. Thank you for that on the Chandler Honeycutt uh, Sports Desk. Do you have any uh, NBA news for us today? I do not. Okay. Uh, the Rick Carlisle news was kind of crazy yesterday. That was crazy. Maybe we'll uh, talk more about that if we have time. Tony Dunn, Carolina Cat Chronicles dot com is here. Oh, how about the Kimba trade? Can oh I? yes, uh, traded poor to Kimba. O- trade to OKC. The no man's land. Uh, and for a first round pick, and Al Horford. Well, the Celtics. OKC got a first round pick. They basically traded Kimba's contract, right? Yep. They were like, yes. "We don't want you anymore." It's very sad. <laughs> yeah. What he, what has he become was treated of his career. very bad in Boston. Well, he also wasn't very good. 
and he stayed injured, I believe. I think yeah, he had I mean, a, I, a lot I, of injury I problems. I love Kimba, but he did not live up to his contract. No, he didn't. And did not. And if they, you look at it, he was wasn't he pretty good when he when he played? It was just that it was so, uh, so yeah, unavailable, up and down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know. And looking back on it, of course, Charlotte fans were not happy with Kimba leaving and Terry Rozier coming in to pretty much take his place. But look how Terry Rozier has performed. It He's has not, not ended up hurting the Hornets at all. Absolutely not. That. I mean, no, look what the but there are done. five they, other contracts that ended up hurting the Hornets all their surrounding problems. it. Good Correct. guys. And you mentioned it yesterday on Twitter, uh, Clip. It is hard to see Nick Batum doing what he's doing with the uh, Clippers right yeah. now. Like being a key player on a playoff team. Right. And he couldn't score, you know, four points for the Hornets. And last night, Harden did play, and uh, the the Nets lost to the Bucks, and that is going to game seven in that series. And isn't that exactly what Corey said was going to happen? Yeah, they're going to lose the next one. Uh, coming up tonight, Sixers at the Hawks. Hawks trying to close out mm. the disappointing Sixers and Utah at L.A. L.A. without Kawhi Leonard trying to close that one out tonight against the Jazz. All right, let's let's uh, let's get another break in. We'll come back. We'll have more uh, NFL talk with Tony Dunn, see what's going on around the National Football League. That and more on the way when we return on Pirate Radio Live after this. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Buick GMC Truck. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown and Wood, get an all-new Buick Envision 2021 and save over $3,500 or 0% for 72 months. As always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the Convention Center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. For the latest from the world of golf, tune in every Saturday morning from 8 to 10 for the Golf Shop Radio Show, presented by GolfNickers.com, the world's leader in traditional golf apparel. Hosts Mark Greenhelch and Matt Blanchard talk golf. Hop on in. Welcome to the Golf Shop. Ahoy there, mateys! It's Captain Jack Spare of R&R Tire Express, your local tire and wheel shop in Greenville, offering affordable, easy payment options for easy ownership. Savvy? Our customers love 3920 US 264 or rnrtires.com. Guess what, Greenville? Calzones are back. Community Calzone is the only restaurant in town specializing in calzones. Choose from over 50 different calzones, or you design your own with unlimited options, including vegetarian. Community Calzone also features wings, huge salads, and more. Plus, they deliver to almost everywhere in Pitt County. Located on Greenville Boulevard next to Ashley Furniture Warehouse, they're open for lunch, dinner, and late night for dine-in, pickup, or delivery. It's Community Calzone. At U.S. Cellular, we see our customers as more than just customers. They're neighbors. When you switch to U.S. Cellular, you can get the new Samsung Galaxy S21 5G for free with no hidden requirements. As a neighbor, you deserve it. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Terms apply. See uscellular.com for details. Does the idea of going to your local U.S. Cellular store make you feel a bit uncomfortable? Tired of the hassle of waiting and wearing a mask? Let Toby Williams and his outside sales team take away that worry. They will come right to your home or office and drop your phone off on the porch or at the front desk for you. Saving you time and worry is what the team at Cellular Warehouse is all about. Call Toby today at 252-799-7051 and let them help you with all of your wireless needs. Cellular Warehouse your local U.S. Sailor authorized agent. The Kinetic Physical Therapy Live Well for Life group kicks off summer 2021 with a bang this Saturday, June 19th at Boyd Lee Park with the Walk This Way event. Walk This Way is a free in-person event where family and friends come out and exercise together by way of walking and running. This two-hour family fun event will be filled with laughs, sweat, fun raffles, and free goodies. Bring a friend to have some fun in the sun this Saturday, June 19th at Boyd Lee Park at 9 a.m. For more information, visit kptonline.com. 
Chico's Mexican Restaurant is where the fiesta never ends. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's every Wednesday for shrimp tacos for only $9.99. Plus, Wednesdays means all Mexican imports for only $2.50. Thursdays, enjoy your favorite beef, chicken, or vegetable fajitas for only $9.99. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's in downtown Greenville and now available through DoorDash, featuring a half gallon of the famous margarita mix to go for only $9.99. Chico's, where the fiesta never ends. This is ECU assistant football coach Roy Tesh, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. Save lives, be a hero, and make $1,000 your very first month donating plasma at Griffles Biomat USA. Start now at Biomat USA on 505 South Memorial Drive. A better donor experience and better pay. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Jersey Mike's open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. Order in store or online through the Jersey Mike's app. Jersey Mike's, a sub above. Now, let's head back into the show. Here's your host. Clip Rock. All right, back with you. Cano. On Pirate Radio Live, everybody grab your Cano R's. R's? Or's is hard to say wrong. How would you say or's wrong? Or's? Or's. Or's. Okay, anyway. I don't know. Ask Corey how he would say it, except for you won't ever ask him that. Or's. My last name is Glor. I can say or. Uh, Shirley is uh, having to fan herself off after Tony read some. My goodness! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can watch. Like, we no, can't we can't really talk about it. We can't read that on the no, air. We can't no. read it on the air. But my goodness! <laughs> I swear, I thought I knew about. Was that fiction or was that yeah. like the actual? I... Like, um, uh... it is a fiction. It's like erotic fiction for football or sports okay so it's not someone's personal account no uh, no okay no, no, all right that's no. what i was a little confused about because i was like if that's real life holy cow <laughs> well <laughs> and i thought i knew about all, like everything on the internet after all these years <laughs> and every like weird sub genre of stuff but i i never knew this was a thing it is and my mind is blown by it and now i'm just thinking about has anybody wrote one about like ryan fitzpatrick like there there has to be i mean there's got to be one on um who was the jets quarterback from the old days joe namath joe namath has oh, got to be one Legendary. of those that one might be real yeah <laughs> <laughs> the book's called dabbing with cam <laughs> yeah, no, God. that is actually what it's called. Yes, that's the book. And it has a picture of just a random African-American gentleman <laughs> on the cover. Where is it that I can purchase this book? On uh, Kindle. This is real life. <laughs> it is crazy. I mean, I didn't write it if I did. Did this come out with Kindle? Actually, yeah. Clip, <laughs> did you write oh, it? Clip it was the Tony Dunn. Clip found the ghostwriter. <laughs> it was Tony Dunn. Tony real name. <laughs> Oh, it's in man. fine print, like very small letters in the corner of the cover. Tony yeah. Dunn, Tanisha Drew, <laughs> big yikes. So this came out when Cam was on the on the team. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah, this came out in twenty. How when, am I after just now figuring? This I know out. this is crazy. I've never heard about. We this used before. to. I used to do readings on the podcast. <laughs> That's a great idea. I I need to go back and listen to those. That's funny. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Any Panthers news this week? Uh, I, the conversation has moved a little bit towards vaccination, and um, one of the uh, Sam Sam Darnold is was one of the guys that came out and said he hadn't been vaccinated, and and this was right before the protocol stuff came out, and then now I guess the conversation has moved to now that the NFL has announced what unvaccinated players have to That's do, that more and more guys are starting to consider it, and also Christian McCaffrey was asked. If he had been vaccinated and he said he was not going to comment on the matter. So, take right. it as you will. So, at, here's uh, something Panthers related. Did you hear about, so Luke McCaffrey, I guess, Just is transferring transfer. from Nebraska. He entered the portal. And and um, Scott Frost, the coach for Nebraska, said, buckle up because this isn't the last time you're going to see this happening. A lot of those kids are getting bad advice. Mm. Christian McCaffrey did not like that. Christian McCaffrey said... Hold on. Didn't you transfer? PSA to all recruits. Take note on how a coach treats his players once they're no longer useful to him. 
Wow. Um, so, and Chris McCaffrey had like a picture of, uh, or like a link to where Scott Frost, I guess, uh, transferred. Max McCaffrey said, transfers in college, brings in transfers this week. Bad advice. He said, treat all former, all players, former and current, with respect, especially kids. Come on, man. So the entire McCaffrey clan is now roasting Scott Frost. And, I mean, we, we see this a lot. It's, it's, it's a real gray area, but where you trash kids on the way out and then you bring in a transfer and you're like, man, this guy, he's a good kid. He's a difference maker. <laughs> so just, I don't know. Yeah, it's these part of the just, game now. He should just kind of keep quiet. I on agree. This, is yeah. that, you know, is that you can have those feelings if you're Scott Frost, but when you put it out there, particularly when you got a guy that has an army of people around him in the NFL and stuff that have a big platform, you better be ready for the blowback. Yeah. So uh, I found that interesting with McCaffrey chiming in on that. Um, I'll also- also, some interesting names uh, trying out for the Panthers in minicamp. One of them is Ha Ha Clinton Dix, who was a first rounder uh, a few years back. Uh, used to put, well known for being with the Green Bay Packers. Zang Gonzalez, also who uh, kicked for the Cardinals, and also T.J. Yeldon, uh, who was a long uh, was uh, with the Jaguars there for a little while. Is tr- trying out. I heard that Panthers name in a while. Right Good uh, uh, pass catching running back during his time. And also, uh, first-round pick, J.C. Horn, has signed his rookie deal. And also, Terrace Marshall Jr. has inked the deal with the Panthers. So they can practice. I they saw, practice. Um, and I don't remember the name now. Did y'all see a um, the quote from McCaffrey where he was hyping up another Panthers running back? Chuba Hubbard? It wasn't Hubbard. It was a name I didn't recognize. Mm. And I, I should have. Uh, should have. Was it on Twitter? I believe so. I don't know. I saw a quote from McCaffrey. But anyway, uh, okay. that running back position behind McCaffrey is uh, is a question mark. No, nah, not not as bad as Atlanta behind Mike Davis. No, not as bad as that. <laughs> but, not as bad as that. But, but you're, it is something that could use a little support. So the TJ yelled in the name. Well, you know, who knows if he's any good or not at this point. But, but, but all the guys behind McCaffrey are not even veterans. They're all right. young, unproven guys. Yeah. So it would be nice to at least have a... Particularly if there's any injury. I mean, it's a lot to ask the rookie uh, who's a fourth rounder or third rounder, maybe even later, Chuba Hubbard, is that uh, to come in and take over the deal. That's a lot. You probably need to be... There. Again, all of these things are predicated on everything going right. So right now they're trying to make some plans uh, for if it doesn't go right. Now, one thing I thought was interesting, too, is that Carolina Panthers, I think, skipped the day of practice. Like they ended early i saw a lot of teams like just wrapping up like all right we're yeah. good we're and going on they said that they were going to take that time to do con- <clears throat> conditioning tests um and, and to get ahead for training camp now i thought this sounds perfect and i don't know why they have other teams that haven't been doing this earlier is to assess what the shape is of your team and you have a baseline so when they come to training camp you'd see how they worked in that in that period so that that does seem like are, are you going to get what is more beneficial at this point you know running you know an extra 30 minutes or an hour of practice or really getting ahead on who needs the most conditioning work in the next month when we really got to come in and start focusing and on the 30 days of working in Spartanburg you don't want people dying out there do you feel like is it like is Matt rule innovative in this way where maybe he's doing things that others haven't been doing this is what they've told us that he would be yes i think so i mean i don't know if it really is or not i'd have to kind of like be behind the scenes on other organizations to see how they were truly running but a lot of that is they were talking uh and teddy bridgewater and his comments came out about not practicing on right. saturdays and they, some of those a lot a lot of those comments seemed or behind the surface the organization is thinking about how to protect the health of guys and get more like is recovery more important at this point than you running an extra five drills in practice for certain players and interestingly teddy bridgewater came out this past week and said that if he could go back and do it he would have shut it down after the injury in week 10 and so if i could Tony go back and, yeah if i could go back and redo it i would just shut you down too <laughs> in week one <laughs> <laughs> teddy is the new tony dunn punching guy it, it appears um did, uh, let's see oh on the uh on the rule note i guess at least it, he's I kind of like it when guys come in and be like, just because it's always been one way, that's not the only way. Right, you yeah. can do things a different way. I did see uh, Dwayne Haskins 
and I'm 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 not like you. Too. I'm more like Chandler than I am like you. I kind of like all the players. Okay. I don't have a lot of hatred. I don't know why I would hate a player. That, that's a great point. I could give you a lot of reasons. And it's not a real hatred. It's a sports hatred. It's different from hating somebody in real life. See, like, that's, that's me. That, I, I, when I say hate or when you say hate, who do you hate as a former Panther? I think of personal hatred toward that person. Do you hate the Saints? Oh, yeah. Do you hate Sean Payton? Yes. Okay. And you get it. As a sports hater. You get it. Okay, so you understand. Yeah. Th- yes. Okay. All right. But you were just agreeing with me a while ago about not you know liking everybody. And Speak not really for yourselves. Anybody. I don't even like them individually. He don't even Tony don't even like <laughs> us. Uh, he uh, Dwayne Haskins saying he wanted to be somewhere where he was wanted, and now he's wanted. And I'm not going to say that he's an awful quarterback, and you know did not put in the work off. To, well, I mean, I mean, I am saying all this. Isn't that very status quo? What do you mean? Just to say good things on a new team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's a new... I think he needed a new opportunity for sure. It, it was going bad in Washington. I don't know if he had, you know, great things around him or whatever. But also, I don't think he 100% bought in, put it, did all he could do to become a better quarterback. I and don't in, think he came close to doing that. But in fairness to him, there was, from the very first moment, a sense that part of the organization didn't want him. Right, is that the yeah, right the when owner it was drafted, wanted like, him and the coaches did? Yeah, and it was before it was even like he even had a shot to yeah. prove them wrong. So I mean, in some ways, he's being honest there. Um, the other thing I did see him say is that he can't. I like this is uh, what do you want to prove to the organization? And he said that I have a love for football. Right, because these are some of the these are kind of the blanket. Usually, it's the Twitter um, draft heads that say this is great talent but doesn't truly love the game. Well, that goes back to your uh, what you were talking about a week or two ago, Tony, where you saw that thing about him throwing the – Ben Roethlisberger said he could throw a yeah, football to a car a, wash and yeah. wouldn't get wet. He's got that part, but does he love it? Is he going to put in the work? Is he going to study? So I think that's a good answer for him. Yeah, I, I agree. And, I, and the one thing I am forgiving um, – when you talk about me hating certain players, it's usually for something that they've said or done to like me or like the fan base, right? It's like there's a reason that I just don't care for them. It's, but one of the things I think I am is I'm pretty forgiving of these people just being young, right? Is that um, some of the things <laughs> is that you figure like this is like I hate this 21 year old kid, right? And <laughs> I mean, and you're like, oh, oh man, if he would just buckle down and study and not go out and I was like gosh if I was 21 you're saying this while you're out drinking right. doing all bad stuff yes I, and, I, I'm with you and man. so yeah. I, I am forgiven it is a lot of pressure on. it's a it's hard thing to ask someone who potentially has never had any money or uh, resources in a, in a certain case economic resources and now they're the toast of the town everybody loves them they have more money and then they can then they know what to do with and they are people like, and, and they're twenty. We're not, you know. I wasn't even a cool kid when I was. I'm barely. I'm not even that cool now, and I'm almost forty. Well, you got the hair and now. Man. I am. I'm, <laughs> I'm finally hitting. The, but and your pool. What you. I'm trying to say is this: is that what I did when I was twenty two did not define my entire life. Yeah, I hope, or maybe I'm fortunate that it didn't. But with a lot of these athletes, we write the book on them in their twenties and then forget about them uh, because we're focused on the next twenty two year old. Yeah. once they're gone. Yeah, so. and sometimes we write the book regardless of what they do. And one of those people is Cam Newton. Have you seen? Did you see the? The new tweet that I saw from the We Network, which is the Boston Network, and they they loved him when he came on the morning show last year until he started playing bad, and uh, they and the, the the headline was Cam's don't be fooled by Cam's charm in mini camp or something to and because he likes to dance and have fun they made it sound like he ain't always done that you know is that but people make their decisions yeah um, about all types of things well, in life yours. regardless of the you the made yours he can do no wrong in your eyes I don't know. I mean, I've, I've had some. I, you don't think that at some point that I've admitted some things about camp, like is like could a certain ac- inaccuracies or footwork be better? I just, you know, I'm a defender. You, you know are. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. is that I got my boys back? You've chosen your path in life. Loyal. You That's are a I loyal am. and a loyal friend, Tony. Thank you. Are you a good speller? No. Uh, spell Delone. 
Um, D E L H O M M E. Well done. Good job, Tony. That one's that. easy. Del Homie. This one, <laughs> yeah, that's how I spell it when I. That's write how I usually question. say it. <laughs> uh, Tony, this one's tougher, I think. Steve Berline. Spell Berline. This one's tricky. B U E R L E I N. You got the end right, but it's B E U E R. Oh, oh. two. Uh, yeah, I knew it'd be Burr. A little before your time, Chandler. But can you spell Chris Winky? W I E N W E I N K E. You got it. That's Tony right. with a little assist with the head shake. <laughs> I can't remember between the I and E, E and I. Uh, let's see. Any other? Oh, how about the hero? He is 16th all time in Panthers uh, history for passing yards. Taylor Heineke. Oh, God. Heineke. Heineke. H- Heineke. H e i n i k e. Oh, you missed the C. C k e. C before the K. Well done, though. Well okay. done, Tony. Thanks Ask for me the one other one. You want to do one? Oh, you want to do? Is it M u s h i n? There's an H in there that is not uh, pronounced. But you know what? A one I can't ever get right is the Muhammad because Muhammad is spelled sometimes M u, sometimes it's M o. Is there M- two M o? Oh, M u. Yeah pretty sure now i need to look it up that was hard to me yeah mu uh and two m's in there as well three total all right tony enjoyed it man thanks all for right, hanging out it, man. see you tony we will uh take a break come back it is free beer friday stick around for your chance to be a winner in hour three where we will talk to matt bridges cam colmore and Corey glore who is leaving us for tulane coming up next in our next hour, we got Morgan Aylers and Greeny, Mark Greenheld from the Golf Shop Radio Show. We'll talk to Greeny when we return and talk U.S. Open after this. The Pirate Radio Podcast. Former Pirate receiver Larry Shannon. We just had one goal in mind as we went to the Liberty Bowl in 1995, and that was the win. Coach Logan had this slogan of unfinished business, and uh, that was kind of our motivation all year. And I just remember that game. Of, offensively, we didn't play very well. Obviously, Stanford had a good defense as well. And I, I remember our defense just carrying us and pulling us through and making the plays you know, to get that big victory for the program. Listen to every Pirate Radio Podcast now by visiting our podcast channel and subscribing in Apple iTunes or SoundCloud. The Pirate Radio Podcast is powered by White Claw Hard Seltzer, proudly distributed by Coastal Beverage. Hey, Pirate Nation, Lindsey Gray here with Carolina Caliber. In 1960, my granddaddy started his firearm business right here in Eastern NC. Still family-owned and operated, we have the area's largest selection for outdoor shooting sports and accessories and are one of the nation's top firearm dealers. At Carolina Caliber, we have everything you need from hunting, home defense, and personal protection, including a wide variety for ladies and youth. We buy, sell, and trade. It's a time-honored tradition. Visit us at Carolina Caliber on Fire Tower Road in Winterville. Jersey Mike's crew doesn't just walk right in and make a sub. We're there early, slicing veggies, baking bread, grilling bacon. Then we walk right in and make a sub. Because freshly prepared ingredients make a sub above. The only way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the only way to get it is at Jersey Mike's. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. At U.S. Cellular, we see our customers as more than just customers. They're neighbors. When you switch to U.S. Cellular, you can get the new Samsung Galaxy S21 5G for free with no hidden requirements. As a neighbor, you deserve it. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Terms apply. See uscellular.com for details. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. If you love the food at Villa Verde, and hey, who doesn't? Now Villa Verde makes it even easier for you to order takeout. Tell us about it, Jay. If you go to myvillaverde.com, you can order online, and we'll have it ready for you to go. Plus, you can pick it up at either one of our locations. No waiting in line to pay, and no waiting at all. Just pick it up and go. With online ordering from myvillaverde.com, or from our mobile app, plus even from our Facebook page. Villa Verde, now with two Greenville locations to serve you. Villa Verde, a platform for good. Okay, let's just try not to embarrass ourselves and everything will be fine. Yeah, 
Yeah, sure, totally. Uh, is that a Pepsi Wild Cherry? Oh, no. Please, not here. Not, not here. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> you know something, Steve? Flavor Mania is about to run wild. Oh, not Flavor Mania. <laughs> Pepsi Wild Cherry is about to drop a flavor suplex right into your pie hole. Not the pie it's going to hit your taste buds with a top rope elbow of flavor. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be refreshing. It's going to throw your wild cherry loving brain right through the announcer's table. Oh, I can't take you anywhere. Flavor Mania doesn't need your permission, Steve, because the world knows that nothing is going to get between Pepsi. Pepsi Wild Cherry and that flavor championship belt. Are you ready to get wild? Oh, please don't, don't Come get on, wild. Come on, Steve. I said, <laughs> or... Pepsi Wild Cherry. Now available in zero sugar. That's what I like. Here today with Gazelle, also known as Brad Bagley to his friends and family. Why F3? Well, I've been doing F3 for five years now, and it's just become part of my routine. Imagine life without them now. One letter, one number, F3. Fitness, fellowship, and faith. All workouts are free of charge and open to all men. Leave no man behind, but leave no man where you find him. Learn more today at F3ENC.com. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, W224EI Greenville, WDLX Washington, and W281CH Washington. Listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. Do you need custom t shirts, apparel, or promotional items for your business, organization, or event? Keep it local. Print it local with University Sportswear. Contact them today at University Sportswear ENC.com. Now back to the show. Welcome back. Do you need custom t shirts, apparel, or promotional items for your business, organization, or event? Keep it local. Print it local with University Sportswear. Contact them today at University Sportswear ENC.com the official sportswear provider of Pirate Radio for 18 years. And let's head back into the show. Here's your host, Cliff Rock. Alrighty, back with you. Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. Morgan Ayler is going to join us in just a few moments. Also, coming up in Hour 3, a couple of former Pirate pitchers, Cam Colmore, Matt Bridges, will be here in the Pirate Radio studios. We'll talk about their careers here at ECU. And also, Corey Glore will join us on the Fixed NC Live line. He is taking over the Tulane play-by-play duty, so we'll talk to Corey Glore uh, in Hour 3. And we will make you a winner. We've got uh, some Bud Light to give away coming up in our Free Beer Friday giveaway. So a lot to go right now. We'll talk some golf with Greeny. Mark Greenheld from the Golf Shop Radio Show. He joins us here on the Fixed NC Live line on the Friday edition of Pirate Radio Live. Greeny, how you doing today, man? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Cliff? Hey, fantastic. And uh, enjoying some golf, Greeny. I tweeted out last night, kind of half tongue-in-cheek, but maybe more than half serious. Uh, every golf tournament should be played on the West Coast. I really enjoyed watching some uh, late-night golf last night, and I had it on NBC. I then went over to Peacock after that TV coverage ended and uh, and, and watched it until they closed up shop last night. I really enjoyed it. What's your take, uh, Greeny, on the West Coast golf? I think you and I have talked about this before, that I, I re- don't really start getting into the golf season until they come to the Florida swing. So, But major championship golf's different. I mean, uh, obviously, if it's a major championship, I mean, I enjoy watching the British Open, you know, in the morning. And mm-hmm. I kind of like watching, you know, some major championships in the, in the evening. But I'm more of an afternoon kind of okay. guy. Yeah, and uh, I talk about this too with uh, with NASCAR buddies of mine. I'm not super into racing, but I I, I like the the racing under the lights where the traditionalists uh, enjoy it in the afternoon. So I guess uh, if I guess most golf diehards, Greeny would would probably go your path there, uh, like it in the afternoons rather than the evening. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, if we can sit there at seven, eight o'clock at night and and watch uh, you know a fantastic finish, because you know. Remember back in 2008, we had the Tiger Woods Rocco Media. You know, Tiger makes the great putt for yeah. off, and guess what? We got to come back the next day for 18 holes, <laughs> and ended up being a couple extra holes. They don't do that anymore. That was the last 18 hole playoff in uh, in the U.S. Open. They now do the the two hole aggregate, and then sudden death after that. So we'll get a champion tomorrow. Talking to Greeny, Mark Greenhouse from the Golf Shop Radio Show. He joins us here on the Fixed NC Live line. Richard Bland uh, in the lead, five under par. Russell Henley is minus four. There is a uh, group at three under par, including 
Um, Bubba Watson, who uh, had a good day uh, today, Greeny, and also uh, Brooks Kepka is two under par, looking to get on the course later this hour. So John Rahm, two under par, got some big names uh, in the mix here on day two of the U.S. Open. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, you talk about afternoon golf. I mean, uh, of the 18 players that uh, were under par as the uh, as the morning wave is finishing up and the afternoon's getting uh, ready to go, uh, the majority of those guys hadn't teed off yet. So if you look at, you know, how the waves have gone, we always look at, you know, from a weather perspective, from a wind perspective. I, I actually thought the guys that went off late yesterday and, and went off early today have had the advantage, but when you look at the scoring, the guys that uh, have yet to go today um, seem to be uh, seem to have done a little bit better so far. So we'll see how that plays out the rest of the day. But yeah, you mentioned uh, Richard Bland. I mean, this is a guy who, in his entire career, which he turned professional in 2000, he won once on the European Challenge Tour in 2001. And didn't win again until a couple of weeks ago. And Cliff, you and I have talked about this before. When you asked me a couple times, you know, who am I looking at? Who are my favorites? And I, what was one of the things that I always told you is you kind of have to look at the guy who's a little hot coming in. Mm. And Richard Bland had won and then came tied for third in his last two starts. So there's one of your guys that was hot coming in. Now, can he hang on? You know, 48 years old, has only won twice in his entire career, and they're kind of lesser events. So uh, odds would tell you that he's not going to be able to hang on. Greeny, Mark Greenheld, uh, Golf Shop Radio Show, joining us today on Pirate Radio Live. Uh, Bland minus five, Henley minus four, and Greeny still uh, some golfers yet to go today. What, what do you think the uh, the scores end up looking like uh, when we get to Sunday, Greeny? Well, what's the score that can win uh, the U.S. Open this year? You know, it's funny. We were kind of hovering around, you know, back in 08 with, you know, under par being the number. And we ended up, I think, at even par when it was all said and done was the was the playoff number. So, you know, I think the golf course, it looks like the weather is going to continue to be around, you know, the high 60s, the low 70s, no rain. Um, there hasn't really been a whole lot of sun today and not a whole lot of wind out there. So, you know, the golf course is kind of maintaining itself. Usually what you, you kind of hope for at a place like a Torrey Pines is you hope that kind of the sun comes out and the, and the wind blows a little bit and this course continues to bake out. I mean, we are seeing some of the colors, the browns and, the, and, and whatnot come into the fairways and stuff. But, you know, I, I don't know. I, I got to say that, you know, you, you had four under was the low round yesterday. Four under is so far the low round today. Y- you got to think that maybe, you know, two or three under you look at tomorrow – I, man, I I think if you get to five or six under and you hold that, that looks like it's in pretty good shape. But the odds tell you that Sunday might kind of be the hang on for dear life day. And maybe you are looking at right where it is now, four or five under par. Greeny, I enjoyed talking golf with you on Fridays. We don't talk about it a ton on our show. Also, I enjoy you informing me on things I should know about golf. So here's one for you to explain to me uh, today, Greeny. I saw a headline. Rory McIlroy says green reading books should be banned. Uh, the story from um, ESPN.com says the PGA Tour is close to banning green reading books before next season. Um, what, what is a green reading book? What does this mean? And what is your opinion on this story? This has become an industry. And uh, ironically enough, I actually have a couple of them in my possession. So I have one from, of course, uh, Lake Nona down in Florida, where the PJ Tour played uh, last year, I believe, in one of their events. But what it is, is, is these companies have made a business. They'll, they'll take a, a, a system out and they'll basically plop it down in the middle of the green and the computers, you know, gather the data, and basically you can look at these green reading books, identify where the flag stick is on the green, and you'll see these guys as they're getting ready to putt. I mean, they break out this book and they flip it open, and they're and they're looking, and it tells you the slope of the green and hmm. the amount of slope, and it, and it gets really intricate. Um, so they're taking time on the greens to look at these books, and I and I and for me as a traditionalist, it's really taking away from your ability to read the green, yeah. and you're relying on technology to do it. There's even apps now that you can pull up in an app for us, you know, everyday golfers, where you can actually use your phone and use the app to look at the putt and see what the putt's going to do. 
So again, you're using your technology, and and uh, I, I, at the professional level, I, I think that they're good enough where they should be able to read the greens on their own and not have to look at these books and rely on technology. So that's what Rory's talking about, and uh, you know, again, the rumor is that they're going to take these books away. Interesting. All right, good stuff, uh, Greeny. What you got coming up Saturday morning on the Golf Shop Radio Show? All right. Well, you know, obviously we're going to talk to Rex Hoggard at the end of the show uh, because it's going to be early out there when he has to get on with us and uh, (laughs) kind of get an update for what he thinks is going to go on for the weekend. We're going to talk to Ron Shiad, who's the uh, head golf professional TPC River Highlands, where they play next week. And we'll also uh, talk to uh, somebody with the uh, the, the Charlotte Knights. And uh, next week, not this Saturday, but next weekend here in the Charlotte area, we got a new uh, facility open. It's called X-Golf. Uh, south charlotte and it's an indoor uh high-tech simulator where you can get lessons you can play you can have fun you can practice all this stuff so we'll be there next saturday but we're going to talk to them about their grand opening coming up and we'll talk to bill bender the sporting news find out what's maybe going on nhl nba mlb all right good stuff greeny uh enjoy the golf this weekend have a great show on saturday and uh, we'll talk to you again next week all right, Cliff, have a good one. You too, man. There is Mark Greenhouse, Golf Shop Radio Show, uh, informing me and maybe some of you on uh, what's going on in the world of golf. I have enjoyed and I did enjoy uh, watching the U.S. Open last night. Chandler asked me uh, how late I watched golf, and I told him that I watched it till the coverage wrapped up on NBC, which was either 9 or 10 o'clock, I can't remember, and then it went over to Peacock, and I have Peacock because I had to catch up on um, Yellowstone. So I still have that and uh, was able to watch the conclusion. It got too dark, so they blew the horn on the course, which means we're pausing for uh, a a darkness delay. Mm -hmm. But you can finish the hole you're on. So guys were finishing up their holes when the – when it was dark out there on the course. But I enjoyed watching it last night. If I was watching golf that late at night, I would just start thinking that it was a rerun. Well, it's also great to get you ready to go to sleep. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, golf is great if you want to take an afternoon nap. It's also great to kind of wear you down at night and uh, get you ready for bed. It's like CBD oil. <laughs> it's like television CBD. There you go. All right, let's uh, get a break in. We'll come back. Morgan Aylers joins us on, I was going to say the Fixed and See Live line, but while he's sitting right out there, he might as well come in studio. Might as well. <laughs> He always gets here about an hour and a half early. i tell you what. He is from the Tom Coughlin School of If You Ain't Early, You're Late. And I appreciate that about Morgan Aylers. Uh, Clip, yes. while we while you were talking to Greeny, we made a change in graphics for a guest that we'll have in the 5 o'clock hour. Oh, I see that. That's pretty cool. And uh, we'll, uh, it'll be displayed on our social media accounts. Uh when he's on the show later in the, uh, in the five o'clock hour, a uh, video of that change being made. That's uh, I like that a little behind the scenes look at Pirate Radio right there. Well done. That's on Chandler's uh, Twitter account. All right, let's uh, take a break. We'll come back. Have more for you after this. Save lives, be a hero, and make $1,000 your very first month donating plasma at Griffles Biomat USA. At Griffles, it adds up fast. New donors can earn up to $1,000 in your very first month. It's the easiest way to make extra money. Start now at Biomat USA, 505 South Memorial Drive, Greenville. Find your donor center at grifflesplasma.com. Make up to $1,000 in a month and save lives now at Griffles Biomat USA. A better donor experience and better pay. Here with Mike Mullis from Fixed NC. And Mike, you were telling me the other day, people ask you all the time, I didn't know you did that. What does that mean? You know, anything that involves property damage repair, call us first. If it's your crawl space, you've got interior humidity issues, a water loss, your ice maker line breaks, obviously fire and smoke. Everybody knows we do those. But anything that involves interior or exterior property damage, we're your repair experts. Mike, how can everybody get in touch with you? 252-999-0001 or FixedNC.com. Weekends are made for AJ McMurphy's. Start your Sunday fun day at AJ's. AJ's is now serving brunch from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and a build your own Bloody Mary bar. Enjoy your weekend with live music on Friday night and Saturday night with no cover charge. And you can catch all of the MLB and ECU baseball action on AJ's TVs. See you this weekend at AJ McMurphy's, Turnberry Square at Bell's Fork, and on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. 
in studio today with Tony Edwards from AG Home Solutions. And Tony, you love to help people remodel spaces or even do new construction. We do, and we also can help people find financing when they want to do projects like this. And so we partner with folks like Joey Barrow with Annie Mac Mortgage. And Joey's in studio with us as well. And uh, Joey, people have a lot of financing questions to be able to help reach the home of their dreams, whether it's remodel or new construction. No matter how large or small the project may be, we have options for you. Even if they have credit concerns, we provide guidance to help you get the home of your dream or turn the home that you currently have into the home of your dream. Joey, how can folks get up with you? You can call us today at 917-8400 or you can go to our website at greenville.annie-mac.com and tony what about if people have renovation questions how can they get up with ag home solutions you can contact us at 947-2526 or check out our website at aghomesolutions.com thanks again to tony edwards from ag home solutions and joey barrow from annie mac mortgage joining us today I'm Sam Jones, and for more than three generations, my folks have kept the fires burning for Eastern North Carolina whole hog barbecue. At Sam Jones, you'll find our smokehouse pumping out wood-fired meats cooked fresh every single day. There are no freezers at our place. Everything, and we mean everything, is made fresh daily, including our sides, sweets, and sauces. Stop in and see us, and I bet you'll be able to taste our passion in just one bite. At Sam Jones Barbecue, you'll find plenty of smoke, but no mirrors. Hey Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Buick GMC Truck. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in Eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown and Wood, get an all-new Buick Enclave 2021 and save over $6,800 or 0% for 72 months. As always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the Convention Center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. At Tiebreakers, we pride ourselves on serving big, big juicy wings. wings. I'm talking big and juicy. Our chickens are the same ones that kick sand in the other chickens' faces. If our chickens played football, they'd be linebackers. The competition's chickens, they'd be skinny little kickers. Trade those kickers in for linebackers. Tiebreakers is open every day at 11 a.m. Follow Tiebreakers on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates. This is Tim Doust, ECU football special teams coordinator, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. Do you need custom t-shirts, apparel, or promotional items for your business, organization, or event? Keep it local. Print it local with University Sportswear. Contact them today at universitysportswearenc.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back to the show. The Tarboro River Banders are back. Come experience the best collegiate baseball around this summer. Only 20 minutes from Greenville, the Tarboro River Bandits have a beautiful stadium, family and kid-friendly atmosphere, great food and drink specials, plus the coldest beer in the East. For more information or to purchase tickets, visit TarboroRiverBandits.com. Now let's head back into the show. Here's your host, Flip Brock. All righty, back with you on Pirate Radio Live here on a Friday. Chandler, Shirley, and the birthday boy, Morgan Aylers. Ex-birthday boy. Uh, one day off. Yeah. Now, two-thirds of us have sang karaoke at a DJ Captain Morgan event. Shirley, have you ever sang karaoke for Morgan? Not for Morgan, no. Okay. Wait, have you? Yeah, yeah back in the past. Yeah, yeah he has. It what, what is Clip, your... Clip, Clip has actually hosted one of my karaoke shows. Well, that is true, too. Karaoke yeah. shows. What's your go-to when it comes to karaoke? I think I did Bob Seger one night at... Um, Turn the page? I did uh, Night Moves, I believe. Night oh, no, Moves! Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Did you in my background? Oh, no, that, the background, yeah that, yeah. that would work. Yeah. But Bob Seger's more the raspy... Oh, yeah. A little too tall. Oh, yeah, Turn I can't do it. Too tall. Took a good bram. I was going to say, should we sing happy birthday? But now I, nah, I think we okay. probably shouldn't. We're, we're good. Yep, we're, we're good. But thank you. Thank you. No, well, for Cincinnati next year, I'll never forgive you. I'm just putting that out there. If I do the PA? For yeah, if you go to a different school, we're done. You got to stay here forever. I already texted Malcolm Gray. I can't keep take all these people leaving, Morgan. I don't like it. Uh, it's been over 30 years. So I'm pretty You're not going anywhere? I don't think I'm going. All right, good. Morgan's going good. to the river. <laughs> Rolling on the river. Uh, ECU season comes to an end, and then immediately 
Morgan, we have to, to worry about what's going to happen uh, with the head coach, Cliff Godwin. His services are wanted by other schools who have more resources than the current school he is at, unfortunately. And we are, we're still kind of waiting it out, trying to figure out what's fact and fiction between interviewing and being interested in jobs. Uh, Stephen Igo had an update today. Cliff Godwin is recruiting for ECU baseball. He's doing, to players. he's doing his job. He is doing great. Yes, well said. Doing his job. So all we can do uh, is kind of wait it out and see what happens. And maybe maybe LSU is waiting for the games to begin this weekend and conclude because they might like a candidate and, out and, in Omaha. And they might, you know, maybe they do. Maybe they want to, you know, complete the search and they got a couple of people they want to talk to. They can't talk to them until Omaha is over with. And uh, then they make their decision. If it is the uh, gentleman from Ole Miss, then uh, I understand there's one coach that's there right now that is, uh, if Molinari leaves, he... Or if good, Bianco leaves. Bian- is it Bianco? Molinari is the LSU guy LSU retired. Guy just, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, Bianco, yeah. Mike Bianco. Uh, if he leaves, there's a good chance that this, this coach might be elevated up to head coach. So, you know, or they go after Cliff... What a tangled web. <laughs> it is. It is. It is uh, my least favorite episode of Young and the Restless we're going through right now. Yes. Mm-hmm. At a school like ECU, we saw it with Skip and, you know, Bill Lewis, uh, I guess, in the early 90s. Bill Lewis, what was the motto? We believe. Mm-hmm. After the season, we be leaving. <laughs> That's, Chandler, give him a rim shot for that one. Thank hey, you. That, that is well deserved. Thank you. <laughs> we be but, leaving. But people have to realize, too, as much as passionate <laughs> as as fans are about their school as passionate as pirate nation is about about the programs here and uh for the people that that work in this industry there's a a finite time that you can cash in on success it's a business i mean as much as you don't want to hear that but hey clip somebody's gonna knock on your door and they're gonna double or triple your salary go from five dollars an hour to maybe ten you might think about it i know oh you're being hypothetical i'm being excited for a second but but in, in the coaching world, being a head coach at a, a school like that, that's that's a big deal. Yeah. Those, they don't, those jobs don't come around very often. And it's funny, too. A lot of guys go to the greener pastures and then realize that, you know what, maybe it I should have stayed where I was. Yeah. And and there there could be regrets on both sides, but you gotta in this industry strike while the iron's hot because you're not gonna always be the hot candidate. And you see it a lot more, I think, in football than you do in baseball. And we, I was having this conversation with some uh, folks the other day. I'm not saying baseball is different than basketball and football from a, uh, a uh, what's the word a stress standpoint, but baseball. The, the athletes you recruit, once you can get to that elite level, and I think East Carolina is at that elite level. It's not maybe one of the top three or four programs in the country. It's top 15, 20. It's, it's easily. Yeah. Easily. You're going to get guys that, that want to play for you. I mean, Cliff's now recruiting Florida and a lot of these different places because they see East Carolina, they see what we're doing, and they players want to come here and play, and they're committing as a freshman or as a sophomore. And that's in baseball, it's a different world, a little bit more than football, where you recruit and you may, might get a commitment early in, in their junior year, but usually it's the senior year that they're going to make a commitment or, or just before that basketball is the same way It's a lot of you know one or two guys you know there's a limited talent pool baseball it, it seems to be a little bit bigger talent pool because they play all year long versus football you play in the fall in high school yeah i go to camps and basketball you go to camps in the summer uh but you play in the winter baseball i mean you can play 10 11 months out of the year in some places they play year round yeah and you've got uh, Pirates, which will get an updated list uh, pretty soon from Malcolm Gray on who is playing baseball in these summer leagues, these yeah. wood bat summer leagues this year for ECU. We'll be following Carson Wisenhunt as he plays for the national team. Mm-hmm. That was awesome uh, to see him uh, get that honor earlier this week. Over uh, under, does he keep the mullet to the end of the season? Now, I'm trying is, to remember. Now, is, now is he, does he have the full... Yeah, he don't have a mullet. He's got long hair. But he's hair. just got long hair. Yeah. Okay. So it's not just the mullet like you had earlier. Uh, uh, no, it okay. was not uh, what I was going with. Now, now when Alec Burleson joined the national team 
I know he had to shave his face. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Did he have to cut his hair? It might know. make him. I think it might be a, just a facial hair thing. The New York Yankees facial hair thing. Yeah, exactly. And that's why Burley is not rocking uh, <laughs> facial hair with the Cardinals organization. He said it's an organizational thing where they uh, have to shave their face. Hey, he keeps playing like he's playing right now and keeps progressing. Grow a beard. Yeah, it's okay. He should probably get. He can get a Yadier Molina neck tattoo if he wants to. <laughs> what? You threw that one came out of left field. <laughs> I just thought of their catcher. He's got a neck tattoo. Um, is Holden getting one of those? I heard a rumor he might get one. A neck tattoo? <laughs> Come on, relax. I'm joking. What, uh, Shirley, what's our favorite song? Bishop Bowwinkle? Hell to the naw, to the naw, naw, naw. To the naw, naw, naw. Oh, I thought you meant side piece. I, that's a, that was the other one I thought. <laughs> what are you and Shirley got going on that I didn't I know? <laughs> No, no, there was a song that I played for... Pokey uh, Bear. Bear. Yeah. yeah. I, it's, called side piece. it's called Side Piece, and I played no. it for Morgan, and Morgan was like, huh, never heard this song before. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's a little DJ to DJ uh, inside baseball chat yeah. going on here that I'm not yeah, privy to. Hell to the null, to the no, no, no. All right. Our personal favorite. All right, we got confirmation on that. Uh, Morgan Aylers is here inside the Pirate Radio Studios. Morgan, uh, I was doom and gloom about ECU basketball, as a lot were this offseason, but you kind of told me to relax. going to be all right. Calm down. Take a breath. We got a uh, a player out of the portal this week, a big who stretches the court, doesn't really play like a traditional big, mm-hmm. um, but add that with what you got returning and with tabs and with the freshman, and I go and I kind of wrote it out on paper the other day. We have a roster. We have a starting five. We have a team. So uh, I will say I'm starting to get a little more optimistic uh, about ECU basketball. <laughs> well, when you go, you look one day after the season, and all of a sudden you, you've you lost uh, five or six guys to the portal, then you lose Jaden Gardner, and you're going... I, you got the Dooley to Kansas stuff. Like There was just a yeah. lot of kind of not-so-good news coming out. Yeah, and, uh, you know, take a deep breath. Woosa, it'll be okay. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Okay. Steve Rockefeller uh, now at Texas A&M. So Good that, move for him. That is a... Uh, a kind pos- of surprising because I know he and Buzz Williams didn't... I don't know if they left on the best of terms. I had heard about that. I don't know what's true or not. But apparently they're fine. They went to an Astros baseball game together. So. Yeah. They had a cold beers over nine yeah. innings, and we're all good to go. But that position uh, has not been filled at ECU as of yet, correct? That is something... Not officially. Oh, do you have a name? Can you um, can you give me a hint? I will tell you who is not going to be, and it has officially turned it down. Really? Me? I turned it. Oh, down. I called man. Joe and said, "Don't even ask me." Morgan, that is. He said. But he said, "Okay." <laughs> is that a uh, when is that announcement going to come out? Do you think next week or two? Uh, that I don't know. Okay. All right. That looks like Harold Varner right there and his Brooks Kepka. Brooks Kepka has a heck of a tan. In fact, all these guys do, especially when you see him uh, on the court. God, he is dark, isn't he? Is I mean, that tanning bed or all natural? No, I mean, he's got like he's got the golfer tan sleeve thing. Yeah. Did you see? Yes, I believe it was yesterday. Uh, Brooks was getting interviewed, and Bryson DeChambeau uh, was walking behind him. No, that was the PG at the PGA. Was that the, that was at the PGA? No, this was another Did one. Did he do I, it again? He like jumped into his shot. Yeah, he photo bomb. Well, video he, like, bombed. He him. just kind of like soireed into his shot. So kind of to recreate, but even do more than he did last time. Yeah, it was funny, and the the feud continues between those two. If I you could look at hey, Shambo, play some good golf and worry about golf versus getting into somebody else's shot on TV. And he's not played that well. No, I think that this is all made for TV. Kepka said earlier this week, we just don't like each other. Morgan, you're a big wrestling guy. This sounds like a storyline to me. And I don't even know who the face and the heel is. I guess the heel would be DeChambeau. I like Kepka. Kepka's not not very, like, personable. He's not very personable, but he just gets out there and on major tournaments, and he just grinds and (coughs) focuses and locks in and you know, seems to be there a lot. So he didn't even really care or participate in a lot of the non majors. He's there to well, he to win in, majors. He was injured early on. He he was coming off an injury uh, uh, prior to I think the PGA. Did he play in the Masters? I don't think he played the Masters this year. I do not recall. Have, but uh, uh, you know, he's the PGA. He was right there with Phil the last round and was being mobbed by fans. Yeah, on the uh, fairway. All right, uh, let's take a timeout. We'll come back. We'll have more with the Morgan Aylers. 
here inside the Pirate Radio Studios. We got our Free Beer Friday giveaway. Real beer. Brought to you by Bud Light Summer. Summer is better with an ice cold Bud Light. Pick up some Bud Light today at your favorite retailer and go to BudLight.com to learn how you can be a winner in the Bud Light Summer STEMI promotion and win tickets, free beer, and more. Bud Light, proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989 and the official beer of the ECU Pirates. Today we are giving away a 15-pack of 14-pack. 16-ounce Bud Light aluminum bottles. It's a 14-pack. Bud Light shirt, koozies. If Morgan takes one, we'll replace it with one in the back. Uh, lunch for two at Tiebreakers and a large two-topping pizza. I wonder if that would be good in my, my strawberry slush. <laughs> I want to say no. It's worth a try. But you never know until you try. Give it a shot. All right, we'll be back on Pirate Radio Live after this. There's nothing more important than protecting your family. Fire ants can cause painful allergic reactions and even death. Protect your loved ones at home where you should feel the safest. Visit PestTechAgreenwell.com to learn of our once-a-year treatment to guarantee you stay fire ant free. Tested and proven effective by your Eastern North Carolina exterminating professionals at PestTech of Greenville. Mention the crying baby for an extra 10% off. The Tuba River Bandits are back, and this year we'll have a full season, and all fans are welcome this year. Come watch some of the best collegiate baseball around with over 20 Division I players on this active roster looking to compete at a high level. We have a family-friendly atmosphere, awesome stadium, food and drink specials, plus the coldest beer on the east. Come do something different with the family this summer with the Tuba River Bandits. 29 home games to choose from. Tickets available at the gate or online at TarboroRiverBandits.com. This is East Carolina head football coach Mike Houston, and I'm proud to announce that our ladies' clinic is back this summer on July the 30th. This evening will provide a behind-the-scenes look at ECU football and a chance to meet the players, coaches, and their families. The evening will end with an entertaining dinner and social. Sign up today at MikeHoustonFootballCampsLLC.com. We look forward to seeing you there. Go Pirates! The best place for delicious food and great prices is Familia. Familia has $6 lunch specials, a $10 pizza of the week, and every Thursday has $2 drafts all day. Sunday brunch is the best for food and family. Come and enjoy favorites like shrimp and grits, made-to-order omelets, French toast, and drink specials like $3 mimosas, beer mimosas, or $5 Bloody Marys. Familia, Fire Tower Road near Pitt Community College and FamiliaNC.com. UBE and PirateWear.com are proud to offer the Pirate Nation its largest inventory ever. Brand new Adidas is arriving daily, along with Under Armour, Columbia, and Russell Athletic. UBE is loaded with cargo, and new items are being added daily to PirateWear.com. Be sure to check out our children's store, The Crow's Nest, for all of your young pirates. UBE and PirateWear.com, an ECU tradition for 50 years. Go Pirates! For years, Callie Ann Phelps has been singing about Phelps Chevrolet. Phelps Chevrolet is the one for you. Low, low prices, service too. See the big dealer right away. Carolina's finest, Phelps Chevrolet. And you'll agree with what Skyler Phelps has to say. Nobody needs Phelps Chevrolet's prices. Nobody. The name you can depend on. Phelps Chevrolet. Get you one. Find new roads with Chevrolet. Then come find yours at Phelps Chevrolet in Greenville. While you're sleeping, our whole hogs are slow cooking over wood to create that bite that Eastern North Carolina is known for. I'm Sam Jones, and for more than three generations, my folks have been the torch bearers for what whole hog barbecue is supposed to be. At Sam Jones, you'll find plenty of smoke, but no mirrors. Everything, and I mean everything, is made fresh daily, including our sides, sweets, and sauces. Come on over and see us at Sam Jones Barbecue, and I bet you'll be able to taste our passion in just one bite. Sam Jones Barbecue, Fire Tower Road. Although innovative new resources such as digital media and social networks have grown in popularity, smart marketers recognize that printing is a mainstay. We live in an age of computer hacking, scams, and fly-by-night businesses, so it's reassuring to consumers when they receive printed marketing pieces. It exemplifies business confidence and conveys a high level of commitment. It also fosters trust, which leads to engagement and ultimately brand loyalty. When you're ready to grow your business, come to PIP, where business goes to grow. 
Pirate Radio. We are not coming together to just be average. We want to build a program that will year in and year out compete for the American Athletic Conference Championship and compete. You're listening to Uckle, print it local with University Sportswear. Contact them today at universitysportswearenc.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Got damage? Damage from wood rot? Fixed. Damage from smoke or fire? Fixed. Damage caused by water? You guessed it. Fixed. If you got damage, use a contractor like that works for you, not your insurance company. Visit fixednc.com today or call 990 990- 0001, that's three nines, three zeros, and a one fixed in C. Restore, renew, maintain. Let's head back into the show. Here's your host, Cliff Rock. That was only two nines. It's 999, not 990. Oh, I didn't. I thought I said all three nines, but sorry. Because <laughs> I don't want Mully to get on you for that. So 999001. <laughs> Thank you, Mully. That's three nines, son. Three nines. Three nines, son. You got to pick it up a little bit, son. Morgan Aylers is hanging out inside the Pirate Radio Studios. Got the U.S. Open on. Little, uh, little San Diego golf. I like it. And, Morgan, uh, we've got a lot going on with the ECU football program right now with youth camps this week. Uh, got Beast of the East. So, what is that, Morgan? That's high schools coming so together. They, they, seven on seven, yeah. basically. Uh, you have a center, and then you, you know, wide receivers, quarterback defensive backs linebackers and they will uh go up against each other they yes. they there will used to be like a sweet wrestling belt the champion we get i wonder if they still I don't do know that if they still do that or not yeah. I, know with, uh, I think they won it one time at conley but uh that's awesome do you know mike houston and his coaching staff will be around a lot of really good players from our area the whole month of june is pretty much camps yeah and it's and we have gone two years since we last had these right mm-hmm. we weren't able to have them last year so i know those coaches are really happy cliff goblin this week able to go to a live high school baseball game for yeah. the first time in forever and uh you know duly able to talk to recruits face to face so it's uh man what a difference a year makes it's full systems go now for these coaches recruiting yeah and then they wanted to get out on the road i mean they're they're tired of zoom calls there's only so much when you're zoom doing zoom calls and there's only so much you can say you and you really get to know the parents and the family and one-on-one face-to-face it's still the best way to recruit and show them what you got and hopefully the pirate coaches uh across the board will have a successful summer recruiting launch all right morgan let's uh this new college football playoff uh potential format mm-hmm. as i keep saying i'm looking for the fine print where's the Where's the rub? Where you know it's too good to be true, and uh, and maybe uh, it is for some of these conferences and schools. Because did you see what the Pac-12 came out and said today? No, what they say, Commissioner Larry Scott. The Pac-12 supports expansion of the college football playoff. All right, great, but and believes the autonomy five champions should annually qualify for the college football playoff. The autonomy, yeah, autonomy five. What the hell's the autonomy five? <laughs> He created his own club that we're not a part of. We're from the left coast. Excuse me, we're going to be the Autonomy Five. We're not the Power Five anymore. Autonomy Five. Look, so get a team that can actually beat somebody before you start trying to set the rules, okay? Why should you be given something that you didn't earn? Now, the proposed uh, format would have the top six ranked to, uh, conference champions conference champions there's a better way i could have said that mm-hmm. top six ranked conference champions right automatically get in okay that does not mean the pac-12 or the acc that means whoever's top ranked whatever conference you're in whatever conference champion yeah is, is, gonna, is be will be in the top 12 doesn't mean you're going to be number one through six it's going to be you're in the top 12 what do you mean I know stuff. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, based on based on what I go ahead and finish what uh, what I'm Larry trying to say about. is it does not guarantee the Pac-12 champion will get an automatic bid in. Larry Scott says yeah, that's not fair. How? If he's a, a Pac, isn't he one of the the top six conferences? It depends on the school that's ranked the highest. It could be Cincinnati. I thought it was the conference champion. Yeah. And it could be SEC, ACC, Big Ten, Big Twelve, American, and Mountain West. That could be the top six ranked conference champions. 
The Mountain West is a real conference. Wow. Apologies to Boise State. They're, they're going to be in the AAC in a year or so. All right, fine. Go to the Sun Belt. Wherever. The point is, it does they're, not... They're not going to... Realistically, unless, unless Boise State runs the table, they're not going to be a... Well, guess what? They've done that. So is UCF, Cincinnati. The point is, you sound like you're Larry Scott here, Mr. Autonomy. Larry's Larry's my boy, Mr. Autonomy. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm saying, Mr. Autonomy, Larry Scott. Now, you're right, Morgan. Uh, In pretty much every year, there's going to be a Pac-12 team that would be ranked ahead of a Mountain West, AAC, whatever. Sure. But anyway, there's going to be six of those. There's going to be six at larges. I can't believe, like, Notre Dame... Doesn't get an automatic. Beat. Hasn't put up a major stink about this, and maybe they will, but they're kind of kicking them to the side, saying you can't be, you know, automatically in, and you can't be a top four and get a buy because those are also allocated to conference champions. I think it's maybe the conference's way of telling Notre Dame you need to get in a conference. Yeah, I mean, if Notre Dame was in the AAC or ACC or the, the whatever, then they have to fight their way through it. Right now, they can they, they play a tough schedule, but it's not as hard as playing a conference schedule every year and being in some of these leagues. Yeah, let me look at their schedule because they did go ACC last year only. Right. And uh, did they make the championship to play Clemson and lose? Uh, yeah, they beat them in the regular season. And lost to them in the tournament. There you in, go. In the playoff. In the- uh, Notre Dame this year, their non-ACC games will okay. be Toledo. Ooh. Purdue, Wisconsin, Ooh. Cincinnati. That'd be fun. That'd be a good game. Uh, they play USC. They play Navy. They play Stanford. The rest of their games are ACC teams. Uh, ACC teams. So I mean, it, it's a it's but, pretty tough but, schedule. But you look at, all right, how many ACC teams do they play? Uh, Florida State, VTech, uh, Carolina, Virginia, Georgia Tech. So that's five. So they play five. They play five schools in the ACC already. And then seven non, I guess. Yeah. I mean, they add three more teams to it from the ACC, and you're in the ACC. Yeah. I guess the the issue want... is they have their own deal, the NBC oh, yeah. stuff, they right? Got, so they got a sweet deal with NBC. That's why they don't want to give that up. They don't want to share yeah. with, the, uh, with the other schools. Yeah. But, Morgan, this is uh, – if this goes through, this is an absolute game changer. Not to change the subject. We're watching... You are fascinated I by am. this guy. There's a guy flying right over – the green right now that these guys are hitting into, like circling it. Well, they're right on the beach there. So I wonder, is he like an NBC cameraman or is he just on his own? I don't know if this is one of the drones they were talking I don't think that's the drone they were talking about, though. I mean, look at this guy. He's in every camera shot. Yeah. It is kind of weird. Somebody take a BB gun and just <laughs> take him out. You don't have to hurt him. Just hit him a couple times. So earlier this week, uh, we Whatever. saw a parachuter go into a uh, live soccer game, and it reminded me of Fan Man from Riddick Bow and Holyfield. Yes, that came, landed it landed in the, the by the ring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, now we got another guy on the golf course here. So I'm, I'm surprised that the and again not to change we'll go back to this yeah yeah I'm surprised though the, the officials with this are allowing this guy to fly over fans and that because if something happens and he crashes into the fans you know who's responsible and with the way golf is I guess monitored by officials where you can't mm-hmm. talk while somebody's yeah. shooting to have this guy going over top of everybody super distracting mm-hmm. all right anyway Morgan Ayler is also super distracting when I try to pass along a point. Well, go ahead. Let's go talk, talk to some more autonomy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Autonomy. Uh, so this, going into a year, Morgan, this, and this is how I feel about it, mm-hmm. it, it stinks knowing that ECU's grand prize is a conference championship, which is great, but then, like, the Liberty Bowl. Like, that's the best they could do in years past. Yeah, right now, I'd take the Farmville Bowl. You're you're not lying about that. You know, but no, for schools across the country, like Cincinnati, had a great year last year. Their top prize was not a playoff; it was playing in a bowl game that you get a lot of money for in notoriety, last, but it, last, it's meaningless. The last three or four years, I think the AAC would have had one or two. Um, you would add UCF when they were undefeated. You'd yes. have Cincinnati last year. Yep. So. This is, uh, this is great for, for schools like that. I, it gives them, not that guys don't have anything to play for right now, but it gives you even more to play for, Yep, in my opinion. You're correct. That's it? We're talking autonomy. It's the first time you've ever We're agreed with me on anything? We're talking autonomy, man. We're talking autonomy. 
I mean, doesn't wouldn't Holden rather is play it, for a is, national is championship? It, is it autonomy or autonomy? I, I don't know. Should we go to Chandler, our uh, Chandler, spelling bee expert and speaker? Autonomy or autonomy? Autonomy. Autonomy. All right. That a boy. There you go. So uh, we will see. And again, uh, schools and conferences still have to agree to all of these uh, guidelines. And I think it's coming out, what, September, August or September this year? They're supposed to finalize it? And it could be going into play at the end of the 2023 season. Is that right? I don't know if it's it's starting in 2023 or the 2022 season when the playoffs are in the 2023 year. Uh, I don't know. This article on ESPN.com says the playoff is entering the eighth season of a 12-year contract that runs through the 2025 season. Uh, the playoff will not change this season or next, though it could happen as early as the 2023 season. So okay. there you go. There you go. Uh, man, this is uh, this kind of came out of left field. I was shocked that uh, I would figure they would continue the slow snails pace they've been on and go to maybe six, then eight, mm-hmm. then ten, and then I don't. I didn't never thought it would get as big as twelve, well, but I, that's where they're moving to. We, t- we, you and I talked about this about two years ago. That having twelve teams, the first four get a buy. Those last eight, they play each other, and then they play the four, and then they play the, you know. Yeah, it's a fine nine. setup. And, yeah, it's going to. And you're still going to have the bowl games. It's just going to be called, you know, it'll be part of the playoff system. It'll be the the to- Tostitos Bowl. and. Did you see the new bowl game this year? What is it, the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl? I, I don't understand. The LA, it was In the LA? LA, LA Bowl, and now they call it the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. Yeah. So Jimmy Kimmel bought his own bowl. Yeah, I guess so. It kind of shows you that. How these call it, these bowls work? Anybody can be bought. Yeah, you, know, mm. you have the Morgan Aylers Bowl, the, the first night show bowl. Yeah, mm. and what's, I, what's I, next? The Jimmy Fallon Bowl? No, no, be better than Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> it would, it would be at Yankee Stadium. Um, That'd be good. I, I heard a uh, a conversation about this too, Morgan. Like, has any institution had a bigger drop off in our lifetime than those nighttime television shows? Because, like, Johnny Carson was a little before my time. I remember a little bit of it. But, like, I loved Letterman. Mm -hmm. I was a huge Conan fan. Jay Leno. I've never been a big Conan fan. That was kind of – I think I was young at the right time. Uh, I was a Letterman guy. Yeah. I like Letterman. Yeah. I remember Johnny Carson, Jay Leno, but I like Letterman. But now – and that was, like, appointment television. And I've seen some reasons why. Like, obviously, we have more options. There are comedians like on podcasts and other. There's other ways to get that kind of humor. Yeah, I think now, and now it's all politics too. There you go. Which is just it turns a lot of people off. As much as I like watching NFL football, when uh, the a few years back when the the national anthem became very politicized and all that, a lot of people started stop watching NFL football as, as as religiously as you were. I mean, you'll watch it. I watch it, but I mean, obviously the ratings have been down for the last three or four years. Hopefully this year they'll be back. I hope so. I'm excited about NFL football this year. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But when I think people are tired of that just the negativity sometimes and late night television is one of those things that have been really hit by it yeah i I just uh, there's a lot of reasons for it i think that is one of the main reasons that you get tired of the uh the same old political jokes and i and this was kind of a thing too growing up through the years that like my era of saturday night live is better than any other era like but that uh, and my era was better right that's what well and you probably are right you might be right but i'm saying like everybody has their Everybody, no. See, everybody has their era of Saturday Night Live. Now, I don't think that's an institution like it once was a long time ago. I don't think so either. So, things change. Now, all we do is watch Yellowstone and wait for it to come out. Wait for it to come out. Chandler, how about this idea? This is just we're spitballing here. We should probably save these discussions for off the air. But a Clip Rock Morgan Ayler's Yellowstone podcast, and we'll we'll recap the episodes, talk about them. And then we'll have guests on, including like Yellowstone superfan Mike Houston and other Yellowstone like fans in, in the area. What do you think? I like that. Okay. I, you just got to we got to work. You got to look hats. out there and see who else likes it. We can wear big cowboy hats. We'll get us some Yellowstone boots. gear. We got to wear boots. I'm gonna call the marketing department. We'll get some. Nah, you don't got to wear boots. I'm wearing. Well, uh, we'll try to have Kevin Costner on. I already have assless chaps. <laughs> My God, this took a turn. Wow. I'm not wearing them now, Morgan. Good night now. <laughs> I'm not so there. long, everybody. <laughs> There's some things in this world 
<laughs> is that a just, mental just image you don't need to know about? <laughs> you that, just, that's you just one took, of them. The two just, guests that we have in the lobby just walked out the door. <laughs> oh, no. You just took Morgan to a very scary visual place. Yeah, I apologize <laughs> for that. We will not talk about that on the podcast. What was one of the, uh, the uh, comedians with the... Uh, Jeff Foxworthy and uh, well, you had Larry, you had Larry, Ron White, Bill Ingvall, Ron, Ron White, Ron White. Yes, Ron Things White. Things that make you go. <laughs> yep. Tater salad. <laughs> <laughs> My son Clip, Tater Tot. <laughs> Clips assless jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna stick with you, Morgan. You're gonna be enjoying your birthday meal tonight and think back to the show and go, oh no. Sanders would go, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Is the steak not cooked? No. Cliff's ass the chefs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Hey, Glenn uh, Griffin, if you're out there. No. Yes. <laughs> Do a graphic. <laughs> <laughs> And you know Glenn will. Yeah, this is bad. Huh? Now I don't like the directions. I just I don't even want to know why you have a pair of assless chaps. We're gonna class this thing up at five <laughs> o'clock with Matt Bridges, Cam Colmore, and uh, Corey Glore. We're gonna go a completely different direction on the show. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm here for, just to ruin everything and let you build it up for the weekend. So we're good. Uh, Chad uh, just got called up to Yellowstone, so he's all set to go. The problem so he's, is so he's not going to be complaining that we've ruined it for him again. <laughs> oh, spoiler! Uh, the problem is we don't know when season four is coming back. Like apparently Kevin Costner dropped a tease on social media, but we need a date. We need to we need to get this thing going. We need to have a watch party for that. A live oh, watch, along watch along for the uh, to see who survived the season three finale. Uh, we got some things in the works here, but first we'll get our cowboy hats. Yeah, hey, and that's the boots. it. And the boots. I got, I got boots. Are they made for walking? Yeah, they ain't made for ashless chaps. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan, uh, what you got going on this weekend? Uh, actually, wedding party. What are you doing? Yep, a wedding. Uh, actually, Sunday. My good friend Kevin Perry and Melinda Perry, who works at UBE, their daughter Claire's getting married this weekend. I'm going to be uh, playing that one over in Nash County. All right, at uh, Rose Hill Plantation. Looking forward to that. And uh, birthday breakfast tomorrow. Good deal. With some of my, my some of my boys. Got a lot of birthday meals planned. Good yeah. for you. Why not? I like it. All right. uh, Thanks for hanging out, Morgan. Thank you. Enjoyed it, man. As we uh, head to break, a quick look at the U.S. Open uh, leaderboard. Richard Bland. I don't know him. Seems kind of a bland champion. He's very quiet and low-key. Bland. Yeah. Dick Bland. Can I make one suggestion? Mm. Clean your computer, dude. What do you mean? Dude, I can write my name right here and say, Uh, wash me. All right. It's so thick you can't even wipe it off with your finger. Get your assless chaps in there. And And do magic. (laughs) That's what I do. Uh, Louis Oosthuizen is minus four. One shot back. Russell Henley, one shot back at minus four. Kepka for a birdie. Brooks Kepka is on the course. 35 feet from the hole. It's going to break left to right. Oh, he just missed it. He is two under par. Uh, on, uh, I guess, hole number two right now. We will take a timeout. We got a huge hour three on tap. Our free beer Friday giveaway. We'll do that. We've got a couple of ECU greats in the house, Matt Bridges and Cam Colmore. Talk about their careers and what they are up to. And Corey Glore, who is leaving us for Tulane. We'll talk about the decision with Corey briefly in hour three as well. It's all ahead on Pirate Radio Live. We're back with you after this. Pirate Radio Podcast. Damon West, motivational speaker and author. The thing about me is I started at an early age. I started drinking beer, smoking a little pot, and that was that led to a bad belief system. And I tell these college athletes and pro athletes and high school athletes everywhere I go that a bad belief system tells you to do something the wrong way over and over again. And the longer you hold on to a bad belief system, the harder it is to get rid of. Listen to every Pirate Radio Podcast now by visiting our podcast channel and subscribing in Apple iTunes or SoundCloud. The Pirate Radio Podcast is powered by White Claw Hard Seltzer, proudly distributed by Coastal Beverage. When fun finally returns, Bud Light legends don't just come back. They come roaring back, carrying a cooler full of Bud Lights, an inflatable dolphin, and those Velcro pads with the balls that stick to them. 
And this summer, with a cooler at their side, they're going to make up for all the fun we've missed. Welcome back, Bud Light Legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Cooler up at BudLightLegends.com. Enjoy responsibly. 2021 AP Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. North Carolina State Parks is proud to announce that they have partnered with the Hometown Strong Program. Our visitor centers are now equipped with public Wi-Fi to help kids with school. Remote learning has become a critical public health measure in maintaining social distance and continuing to educate our young people. Take advantage of Wi-Fi and a hike at Goose Creek State Park or a day trip to the beach and access remote learning at Fort Macon State Park. For more information, visit hometownstrong.nc.gov. Great food, great atmosphere, and great service is Atavola Market Cafe. Atavola is simply a restaurant that focuses on that, being a great restaurant. There's something for everyone at Atavola. The menu offers a variety of great choices like pastas, pizzas, sandwiches, soups, salads, and seasonal rotating selections. Lunch or dinner, Atavola is always the right call. Call ahead and get Atavola to go. Or stop by the bar for a drink with friends. It's simple. Come and eat at Atavola Market Cafe, Red Banks Road next to Food Lion, and AtavolaMarket.com. Atavola, pirates supporting pirates. East Coast Grading and Utilities is your source for clearing, hauling dirt, and concrete work. East Coast Grading and Utilities handles all sewer and water issues as well. I'm David Vaughn. Whether you're putting in a new subdivision or helping you with any and all of your drainage problems, I can get the job done. Call me at 531-7494. No job is too big or too small. East Coast Grading and Utilities. Friends helping friends. 531-7494. For East Coast Grading and Utilities. Utilities. Hello, this is Talbot Green with Angel Oak Home Loans. Now is the time to take advantage of the opportunity to buy more home or refinance your current mortgage at historically low rates. The combination of our local team's experience and Angel Oak's wide offerings of products from standard conventional, government, and portfolio loans has something for most financial situations. For more information, call Talbot Green, Joanne Weir, or Wanda Hager at 751-2060. NMLS 1719250, Equal Housing Lender. Hey, Birdland, watch the O's take on the Toronto Blue Jays June 18th through the 20th at Oriole Park. The first 15,000 fans, 15 and over, who attend the game Friday, June 18th, will receive a Cedric Mullins t-shirt. Plus, on Sunday, June 20th, bring Dad to the ballpark and celebrate Father's Day. The first 10,000 males, 18 and over, who attend will receive an Orioles canvas beverage holder. Don't wait. Spend your weekend at the yard. Purchase your tickets at Orioles.com slash tickets. The whole family's home. It's almost time to eat again, but you don't feel like cooking again. So close the microwave, put away that box of instant whatever, drop your spatula, pick up the phone, and get a big bow box delivered with eight pieces of legendary fried chicken, fluffy buttermilk biscuits, fixins, and tea. Because no one ever said a home-cooked meal has to be cooked at home. Just tap your favorite delivery app for a big bow box at your front door. It's bow time. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. You've worked hard to start your business that are working even harder to make it successful and that's why it's important to have a bank in your corner when you need them. As the business world throws you curveballs, Select Bank and Trust is here to, respond, to be responsive to your needs. Select Bank's team of local bankers can make local decisions and cares about you, the customer. Get the business services that are right for your business today with Select Bank and Trust. Bank local, bank select. Now let's head back into Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Cliff Brock. All righty, back with you on a Friday edition of Pirate Radio Live. It is hour number three. That means we'll make you a winner coming up later on this hour. Free Beer Friday. We got a great Bud Light bottle gift package for you today, including lunch for two at Tiebreakers and a large two-topping pizza from Domino's. All right, uh, joining me in studio, I mean this in a nice way. I wish these guys weren't here right now and were in another location getting ready 
to pitch again. But, man, it's awesome to have a couple of Pirate greats uh, who just wrapped up their careers here at ECU. Matt Bridges and Cam Colmore hanging out in the Pirate Radio studios. Matt, Cam, thanks for joining us. How you guys doing today? Doing good. We appreciate you having us, man. Yeah, thanks for having us. Loved watching you guys pitch your entire careers, and uh, especially last week as well. And Cam, I don't know what the hell happened on that last pitch. Um, yeah, I kind of wanted you to just go crazy and get thrown out, but you know what? You, you probably made the right choice not to. But let's, uh, I guess we'll start there with last weekend, what that experience was like, because the headlines will be with Lighter and Rocker, and, and they're awesome, but the ECU pitching last weekend, top-notch with Gavin, with Wizenhunt, what you guys uh, were able to do, and uh, just uh, some good ball games, tight series, just didn't go your guys' way. Yeah, um, obviously Gavin showed what uh, you know he's capable of, and you know how he's a top-notch pitcher, just you know like the, those guys are. And obviously, you know he gave us every shot to win, and um, you know things just didn't you know swing our way. And then you know game two, Carson stepped up in a big way. You know, it's a, it's a young, he's a younger guy, and you know that's a big moment for him, and that's huge for him going forward. You know, and to be in you know super regional games like that, and. Um, so, yeah, the pitching gave us a great shot, and, um, you know, our hitters have had our back all year, and, uh, you know, just we just couldn't get a – it just didn't work our way. So. Yeah, couldn't string together hits, and uh, but the, the pitching side of things, Matt, uh, you guys were fantastic all weekend. Yes, sir. Well, appreciate it. And uh, it was definitely a good experience, like you said, you know, for Carson and some of those guys. And um, just, just for the future going forward of the program, it's, it's looking bright, and they're, uh, they're on the way up for sure. Wizard Hunt, you know, that was his first big game, you know, super regional experience like that. And Matt, I think back to you as a freshman throwing those hooks, those uh, breaking balls against Texas Tech, which seems like a lifetime ago. But, sure does. Uh, you know, what, what what do you remember about that experience and, and that, you know, were you thinking about the moment or are you just out there pitching when you're doing that? I just really just sink into the moment and just, just have fun with it, man, because that's, that's the biggest thing. You know, it doesn't come around too often. We talk about it with these guys a lot, you know, just step back and enjoy it because i mean well we've, we've got luckily we were able to experience you know four regionals in five years and three super regionals but it really doesn't come around too often you know in, in the history of the program that was only the sixth time ever so yeah. um really just to just to have fun with it because there's no point in putting too much pressure on yourself and really we do it all we we practice this game all the time so there's no point in just putting all that pressure in the first place matt bridges cam colmore hanging out here inside the pirate radio studios and Guys, uh, once again, a phenomenal season. That weekend where the regional was hosted and you got fans back, and I described it kind of as like a, a pirate family reunion because you know I ran into a lot of the parents and uh, met a lot of those folks and, and the pirate family. But how awesome was that to you know you had a lot of success at Clark and Claire this year, but you finally got to do it in front of the fans. How big of a difference is that pitching in those environments? Oh, um, it's something that you know we'll take with us for the rest of our lives. Um, you know, pitching. In a packed Clark Claire Stadium, there's nothing like it. And uh, you know, missing you know the, with the COVID season, it just made you know that regional that much sweeter. Just because you know, um, like like you said, we it hasn't been like that in a while. And just with the COVID season, and you know, us us two really at one point not knowing if you know we were ever going to pick up a ball again. You know, what I'm saying if we could come back, and then uh, luckily the NCAA gave us another year. So you know, yeah, just with the covid season just made it that much sweeter just to see all pirate nation there and it was you know a time that me and him both will never forget yeah and i mean they traveled well to nashville too which yeah. is special and uh doesn't come around too often i think that's the first time that the whistler's ever been you know <laughs> taken over by uh, the opposing fans good call and uh you know that's that's what makes pirate nation special as a whole and i uh, just couldn't do it without them for sure and uh, it was great to see Pirate fans were welcoming you back home. I was at the send-off. Uh, why did uh, Zach Agnos make three trips to the bus during the oh, send-off? You know, you know that guy's a people guy, man. He's got to be <laughs> he, seen. like, made three laps around the fans. Oh, he's got to be seen. That's just, <laughs> hey, that's, you, should know, you should know what Jake, man. That's I just, just found that interesting. Thing. That's an Agnos thing. Definitely. Uh, you got to love him. You got to love him. <laughs> the dog pile guy. photo. Who's at the top? Who do you think? Yeah, yeah. Who do you think? Yeah. Zach, yeah. It's um, identical, too. I did oh, it, is. Jakes. it is <laughs> but you know it's cool it's cool everybody's got the, the different personalities to make up a team uh, i found oh, yeah. that funny but those are great guys love talking oh, to yeah. uh they, to jake here on the show they make the teams what they are though they really do and uh i believe it was zach who uh he had a good line right after the regionals were announced where he said he watched you guys play and now y'all are his buddies like you know he watched 
Jake's buddies play, and mm-hmm. and now you're part of that friendship. That was really right, cool to hear. Definitely yeah. cool for us. You know, they're they're very similar, and you know how they how they talk, and they bring a lot of energy to our team. But uh, yeah, it's definitely cool playing with Jake and seeing him where he's at now, and you know, Zach's got a bright future as well. Man, you're kind of like you're the old grizzled vet. Like we go yeah, to you for, for comments, <laughs> Yoda. Like, uh, were you always uh, kind of this mature demeanor you are, or did you do a lot of growing up during your time at ECU? Uh, I mean, I definitely more outspoken than I was when I first got there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's just you know, Coach Godwin and I having a lot of meetings, and I think the surgery really helped me as well, just because I was able to see the game from a different perspective than most, and uh, having the eligibility after that was was cool and. Really, just given feedback and experiences, I was able to come out of my shell a little more, and it carried into the following years, and uh, wouldn't trade it for anything. And let's uh, and and this is this is a positive because you overcame, but you know you guys faced injuries. What like how many injuries did you guys face during your careers here? Well, let's ask Zach Womack. Well, we didn't have to call. <laughs> <laughs> get Womack well on here, but. You got to know him well oh, over man. the years. I, I think too I, well. got, I got my own little table in there. Yeah, with, so. that, with us being six year guys this year, I don't know <laughs> if we could play the whole season without one back on. No. We, you know, we, ain't, you ain't built like them freshmen that just came in. So, uh, yeah, well, it used to be. Part of the game, and, and you got to be, you know, you got to be physically tough, but obviously mentally tough, right? Mm-hmm. To kind of bounce back from those things. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, it definitely plays a part. And I mean, I think that's why we had a lot of success here in our last year. It was just, it is. 80 90 percent mental i mean the whole game is so um we, we train ourselves all the time but um definitely that mental aspect is has got a lot to do with it so what's uh next for cam colmore and matt bridges i'll, I'll start with you cam uh, is baseball still in the plans or are you going elsewhere yeah you know uh obviously right now i'm looking for some you know some opportunities some job opportunities um if baseball is still in the in the in the works you know we'll see what happens with that and um you know with the with the draft being you know so later this year it's something that you know we can't really worry about it's just if it if it happens we'll see what happens with it but um you know yeah we're looking at some opportunities right now we both are and um you know one of the gigs would actually be together so um that would work out really well and you know so yeah i'm looking at some opportunities and we'll see what happens but um you know nothing finalized yet but uh hopefully we'll get there soon so yeah, right. along the same lines, like one of the gigs is is together. So I guess they don't want to split us up right now. Um, you know, sorry for them, but it's like nah. a buddy comedy. For you guys. <laughs> so no, when did you guys meet? Was it like before you got here? We like actually recruiting met trip um, or? with Dirtbags, Dirt, yeah. the show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Probably, uh, probably 2013. Yeah, wow. A lot of guys, you know, Jake Washer, Turner Brown. Um, you know, just there's uh, I'm like forget a lot of them, but yeah, there's a lot of guys that um, we came in with. Probably over half the guys we came in with are on that team, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, you know, and Turner and Cam and I, we all lived together along with uh, Drew Scork. He played um, our freshman year here at ECU, and uh, we've been buddies ever since. So you know, Turner's got a wedding coming up, and we've been close, and we're fortunate enough to be in that one with him, and. Just, it's uh it's all coming full circle now so we've had trey daly on the show in the past was he there when you oh, guys yeah. oh yeah, yeah. still talking oh, yeah. to trey to this that's great day, and so. he's still talking about future pirates so yeah, uh, a nice little him. pipeline it there is with the dirt bags. it is it's pretty cool uh well, yeah well yeah, you guys are going to be successful and no matter what you do i would advise not to get into real life you know <laughs> it's you know just stay away from time. it as long as yeah, you can because it's always gonna be there yeah. keep having fun like van wilder are you familiar with that film you guys are probably too young but about the dude that just stayed in college forever <laughs> have you ever thought I about that i didn't check that out <laughs> it's not a bad gig no. in fact i got some uh costumes in here if you guys want to try to go back to ecu as like i would do it sam bowl core and <laughs> pet pigeon or whatever like let's just keep this thing rolling baby it's been a lot of fun <laughs> coming back for the seventh year uh back. you guys come back another year and who would your head coach be if you came back next year uh, uh, that's a good question right yeah i mean obviously i think everybody's seen what's going on on twitter yeah. but don't really have enough to comment on that yeah. one just all i know is you know coach g was he was our head coach you know and we uh we love him to death i hope he's a pirate forever but uh yeah and he's taught me uh you know more more than just baseball and um i'll be forever grateful with him and i'll always have a connection with him um you know throughout my whole life just because of you know the life lessons he's taught me and um and just made me a better person 
how did, how did your relationship change with a, a coach like Cliff who was so demanding? Like when you get there as a freshman, is there any like, man, can I can I make it through with this guy? And then now after wrapping up this year, you're probably more like a coach than you are a player at yeah. this point. Like how did y'all's relationship change over the years? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, coming as a freshman, um, and then now it's been completely different. But it's just you know all about gaining that trust and yeah. respect with him. And then you know once you gain that respect with him, you know it's kind of like all right we're player we're going to be player led so it's your job to take over you know these younger guys and help them out so i can worry about other things and you know things that i can worry about like you know being a hitting coach and teaching our guys how to hit other than worrying about how the guys are with their attitudes and how they are off the field so yeah i mean the biggest thing is just got to buy into it because i mean it's very challenging when we get there you know we don't talk about things being hard you know life's hard but what we do is just challenging and uh you know i remember the first day of summer workouts we're out there running the boneyard and i can't feel my legs walking back to the dorm you know that's that's like as a typical freshman you're like man i don't know if i can do it but like later on like he's just building character and just building us as people and couldn't appreciate that more and like cam said you know we we came a long way you know we just i think at the end of the day you don't you stop worrying about yourself and focus on how you can get your teammates better and it helps us all grow and you know get caught up in their success and ultimately that plays a part in ours and it's uh it's, it's it's special for sure and when, you know we look at wins losses era all that but the gpa i mean record setting gpa you yeah. guys killed in the classroom as well and yeah, that, that just, way it does a great job exactly um, i mean we also but it's you know we we learn a lot through the program and do it on our own too so i mean that's just the discipline that we have instilled in us at ecu and you know coach Godwin does a great job with that and but rebecca she she definitely helps organize our classes and takes a lot off our plate and helps us focus on baseball too so it's uh it's been great and you know we uh i've i have a great almost two degrees now from ecu yeah. and you know that's ultimately thanks to her too so i was gonna ask when did you guys graduate so the spring of 19 wow okay yeah. mm-hmm. with you know undergrad and then yeah we'll have i have one more class in the nba program left yeah, after awesome. this summer so i'll have three so good so deal we'll be wrapping that up here shortly fantastic talking to matt bridges cam colmore here uh inside the pirate radio studios coming up in just a little bit we're going to roast Corey glore for leaving greenville <laughs> and heading to to tulane i can't handle these people leaving man hey, like man. oh man it's, it's tough it's part of life right yeah <laughs> it is pulling on the strings <laughs> <laughs> no doubt uh we'll talk to Corey. Uh, who was in that chair you were in yesterday, Cam, and didn't tell me anything about this. Uh, he probably didn't tell me because I would cry on air. So, like, it's probably better <laughs> he didn't tell me. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. He, and, again, he's part of the Pirate family, and you guys are playing, so you don't hear it. Maybe you can go back and hear it. But the way he interacts with fans and parents during the mm-hmm. game, it, it really and, – and you guys have been a part of it for so long. Right. But it's so, like, close-knit, and you say Pirate Nation's a special place. You guys lived it. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's part of it. Yeah, he is part of it. I mean, he's even – you know, he's friends with our with our parents, you know. Um, he's just a, such a great dude, and he's been there with us every step of the way since me and Matt got here. And, you know, I wish him the best. You know, I'm happy for him. Um, mm-hmm. But – yeah, he's going to do great things. He'll do great. All right. I already told him he's got to shout us out when the Green Wave plays oh, yeah. Pirates. So, so that's, that's coming. <laughs> yeah. He's got it. But, uh, yeah, I know he'll have a different tone in his voice. But Yeah, all right. it's weird. It's, <laughs> it's almost dirty to think about, actually. <laughs> all right, we got a uh, great giveaway. We'll get to that as well. Let's take a timeout. Chandler will come back and have more with Cam Colmore, Matt Bridges, Corey Glor going to join us. And if you have a question, you can chime in on Twitter, Facebook Live, and uh, we'll pass it along to Matt and Cam. We'll be back with more Pirate Radio Live. Live on a Friday. We're back with you after this. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown & Wood Buick GMC Truck. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown & Wood, get an all-new Buick Enclave 2021 and save over $6,800 or 0% for 72 months. As always, Brown & Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the Convention Center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. 
save lives, be a hero, and make $1,000 your very first month donating plasma at Griffles Biomat USA. At Griffles, it adds up fast. New donors can earn up to $1,000 in your very first month. It's the easiest way to make extra money. Start now at Biomat USA, 505 South Memorial Drive, Greenville. Find your donor center at grifflesplasma.com. Make up to $1,000 in a month and save lives now at Griffles Biomat USA. A better donor experience and better pay. The convenience of Pitt Greenville Airport is waiting just outside your front door. Service is back, so you're connected to destinations worldwide through flights from American Airlines. Plan your next trip. Book your flights today at flypgv.com or aa.com. Ready to travel and take a trip this summer? Avoid the long check-in lines and congestion at the big airports and fly local at PGV. Fast, convenient, and close to home, PGV has recently added more American Airlines flights. Book today at aa.com. PGV, where the pirates fly. Hey, Pirate fans, it's time to get that yard done right with the new John Deere mower from Quality Equipment. Our premium lawn care lineup is what every homeowner needs this spring. A John Deere will change the way you mow with easy-to-use attachments, effortless steering, and intuitive controls. Right now, save up to $700 on X300, X500, and X700 series mowers. Learn more at qualityequip.com and get quality done right. Offer ends 10 21 Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Ooh, look at all that Parmesan cheese on that papadilla. Our freshly folded flatbread filled with juicy meats and melted cheese now has a crunchy, toasty outside. Mm. Now that was Papa. Order today at PapaJohns.com. Hey, Pirate fans, order the new Parmesan Crusted Papadilla for only $7. The new Parmesan Crusted Papadilla is an MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at PapaJohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. Here today with Bench, also known as Eddie Lozner to his friends and family. Why do you go to F3? Well, if there's anybody out there listening who has a desire to become the best version of themselves, I would highly recommend F3. The workouts are open to everybody, to all men. Uh, they're free of charge, and they will improve the quality of your life in a lot of ways. If Troy D. and Ellerby can do it, anybody can do it. Come join us in the gloom. One letter, one number, F3. Learn more today at F3ENC.com. UBE and PirateWear.com are proud to offer the Pirate Nation its largest inventory ever. Brand new Adidas is arriving daily, along with Under Armour, Columbia, and Russell Athletic. UBE is loaded with cargo, and new items are being added daily to PirateWear.com. Be sure to check out our children's store, The Crow's Nest, for all of your young pirates. UBE and PirateWear.com, an ECU tradition for 50 years. Go Pirates! Have you ever seen those exotic aquariums like the guys do in Las Vegas on television? You ever thought about having one of these aquariums in your business? It's more affordable than you think. This is Hal Pruitt with rentafishtank.com. We can make having an aquarium in your business turnkey with no work, cleaning, or hassles for you. Rentafishtank.com creates a relaxing atmosphere and keeps children occupied. Rentafishtank.com already services many dental, pediatric, and doctor offices, plus hospitals and senior living centers. Check us out at rentafishtank.com. This is Coach Blake Carroll, Defense Coordinator for East Carolina Football. And you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding Pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Tiebreakers is open every day at 11 a.m. and is the best place to watch your favorite sports while enjoying the best wings in town along with sandwiches, appetizers, cold beer, and more. Follow Tiebreakers on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates. Now let's head back into the show. Here's your host, Clip Rock. All right, back with you with a couple of former Pirate greats. It sucks to say former, but Matt Bridges, Cam Colmore, played a lot of baseball here at East Carolina. I was thinking about this during the break, Matt. With the bats struggling a little bit in Nashville, did Cliff Godwin make a mistake not sending you to the plate and trying to spark a little rally there? I don't think he made a mistake, but I would have definitely been itching to get another AB. I was trying to, 
I was gonna try and get one in the air next time. That was my next, oh yeah. That was my next goal. The shot sure. through the middle is not enough. Nah, you gotta yeah. We got we got with the batting average up. We're just. We're looking for the over the fence ball. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a. Uh, do we got Corey by the way? Oh man, traitor among us. You know, Corey hey, Glore, touch it, touch it on that. Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I, I do, I do hope Coach Cotton somehow listens to this because you know he did promise me an at bat this year. I was going to ask you about it that. It was never given. So one but, of the uh, <laughs> he pre- and he did promise me. I got it. I got it on my phone on text message. Wow. It just you know just never never panned out. Don't put that's that right. out there. Now recruits are going to be like this coach that keeps exactly. promises to players. Well, that's Cam's biggest regret, right? Not I think getting you that AB. to get it in naturally. But I, I, towards yeah. the end of the year, crunch time moments. And then usually know. with, you know, we sometimes we'll, with us uh, pitching, you know, a rider or something like that. Or yeah. one of the, or Zach, you know, some one of our pitchers got a hit sometimes, like Cooch did. And yeah. The regional, or obviously Matt did. But I guess he wanted to pan out that way and just, just never panned out. So And uh, one of my favorite calls of the year was Matt Bridges. That was on the road. Was that the Georgia, Georgia Southern, Southern, Southern series? And uh, Bridges came through with an RBI single through the middle. That was awesome. And Corey Glore was on the call for that. And Corey Glore joins us now on the Fixed and See Live line. Hello, Corey. My favorite call of the year as well uh, because it was so out of the blue. No offense to Matt there. But a very <laughs> unexpected moment. I'll say that. Uh, yeah. Hello, hello again, Cliff. It's good to talk to you again soon. Yeah. Um, why are you leaving us and why are you leaving me, Corey? Well, and here I do want to apologize to you, Cliff, because I, I could not say anything yesterday. I did think about canceling uh, my appearance with you because yesterday was when I did uh, get the job offer. Wow! But I wanted to see you again, uh, and I wanted to get in there, and so I apologize for uh, for sending you astray yesterday. Uh, it, it was an opportunity that came my way that it, it's just too good to pass up, and uh, I can't thank the folks down in New Orleans enough for giving me this shot. It, it came together very quickly. Uh, it, it's been about three weeks from start to finish here. So um, it, it's uh, it's something that I just, I'm really thrilled at the chance to do, and I had to jump at it. So it, it is nothing that you have done to me, Cliff. <laughs> uh, nothing that, well, and, you know, I Cam and Matt reached out to me earlier today, and I'll tell you what I told them. I started when they started. They're leaving now, so I got to leave. <laughs> it's a fair. It's a trio. <laughs> got to stick together. Yeah. yeah. So. I, I get it. And uh, no, we joke a lot, but Corey, obviously, we're all like super happy for you. We know you're going to kill it there. And it's uh, a great opportunity for you. Uh, now, Cam, you, you hate Tulane. Um, you know, uh, Corey, uh, Cliff just was like, you know, who, you know, who would. Who points sticks out to you about you know your least favorite team playing and you know if you just hate somebody but you know I know it might be the wrong time because you just joined on but I would have to say in our conference it might be Tulane honestly man I, I apologize but you know obviously you got the states you got the Carolinas but you know in our conference it might have to be Tulane mm. but Corey hey, I'm happy for you man I, I appreciate everything you've done for us and um, you know I know this is a great opportunity for you and I, I wish you the best man I know you're going to do great things and uh, what's funny is uh, I was down in New Orleans earlier this week to meet the people there, and I met with, with Travis Jewett, head baseball coach, and uh, we, we did kind of talk a lot about just how fiery these matchups have been over the years. There's always something extra with ECU and Tulane, so uh, uh, seeing it from the other side next spring will be unique for me, I'll say that. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, there's always been something between these two on the baseball diamond and, and hopefully I, I'd love to see it keep developing on, on the football field and the basketball court as well. It would make things very fun for me. It's not a little bit strange. Corey, we talked about it yesterday. I, I, it was the most outspoken you have been about umpires ever this weekend, uh, this past weekend in Nashville. And we talked about Cam's final pitch and uh, some of the other calls and non-calls. And you kind of said, like, you get to know these guys and you do so many of their games and you, you got a little attached. And you, you called it unprofessional. I think you've been nothing but professional. But uh, you, you got a little emotional and a little upset at the way these guys were getting squeezed uh, last weekend in Nashville. Now with, with this news today, I think it probably illuminates a little bit more 
about maybe why I was as emotional as I was. Because last weekend, it wasn't set, but I kind of knew that that was probably going to be it for me here. And to see the season end the way it did and likely my time calling these games and like that, where it just, it just didn't feel right, well, it was really hard. And, and yeah, I, I've gotten to know so many of these guys, and you're sitting with two of them who I've gotten to know real well. And so to see their careers end like that it was really hard for me to watch as a guy who also was likely going to be heading out the door here. So, um, yeah, the emotions did come up, and, and what what you know those guys sitting with you don't know is you know I I knew that that was probably it. So I waited around when we got back to Greenville Saturday to make sure I said goodbye to those two, said goodbye to Tyler because I called some of his high school games before he even started at East <laughs> Carolina. Wow. Um, and I, I was holding a little bit of emotion back there because I, I figured that would probably be it for, for me seeing these guys. Um, it, it was, it, the, the last couple of weeks have been a thrill ride, uh, and also a little bit of a challenge for me because this was, this was kind of coming up on the horizon. But, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's been, yeah, last weekend was uh, a very emotional time for, uh, for me for a lot of reasons. Corey, uh, and boy, how about this? We uh, Next week, I'm starting our ECU football opponent previews, and we talk to the play-by-play voice for every opposing team. I got Steve Cotton lined up for Marshall coming up. And week five, ECU is at Tulane. So I guess coming up soon, we're going to have to talk to the voice of the Green Wave, Corey Glore. You don't know anything about their football team, so you better study up so when I get you on the show, you can tell me about them. A little bit about the football team right now, and I believe also, and now I'm going to say this, Tulane, we come to East Carolina. Oh, I apologize. That is in Dowdy Ficklin Stadium on October 2nd. So I'll be back pretty quick here. God, hearing you say we, that was gross right there. Oh, it's, it's a little weird. I'm still I'm going to take you some time. But <laughs> I would imagine take you all some time as well. But uh, no, I, I do request a little bit of, of prep time. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I will happily join you for a preview of uh, week five between the Green Wave and the Pirates. There you go. Uh, Corey, thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for uh, being a pal over the years and coming on this show, hanging out at Sports Trivia. And uh, look, I still talk to Graf, former Tulane announcer, Todd Graffinini, and uh, we'll still uh, talk to you quite a bit here at Pirate Radio. But we wish you nothing but the best, man, and uh, look forward to hearing you call some Tulane action this fall. And before you cut me loose here, I, I'm not skedaddling immediately here. I will be around Greenville for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're still locking down a start date, but I'll, I'll be around for at least to the end of this month. But, uh, I thank you for everything you've done for me since I started here. Uh, and you're really good at what you do, and you've been a better friend to me over the years. And to the two guys sitting with you, um, Cam, Matt, uh, you two have been unbelievable to me and to see you two grow up from what you were as freshmen to what you are today and to get to know your families and to be friends with Kelly and Brett and Tim and Catherine and you guys, uh, that's everything to me. And I'm going to be leaving here, but Pirate Nation sticking around inside of me and you guys are a big reason why. So thank you for everything over the last six years. Thank you, Corey. Yeah, thank you, Corey. We appreciate what you've done and everything you've done for us. Um, but like I said, you know, I still hope for that shout out when the Tulane plays the East Carolina Pirates next year. And you guys are saying you're looking for jobs. One just <laughs> opened, so I mean, <laughs> stick around. How about good. Bridges and Coleman were on the call for ECU baseball? That? Show. Yeah. How about that? Show a three man booth. That would be fantastic. Yeah, with Coach O right in the middle. That would be great. All right, Corey. We'll see you, man. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thanks. it. Yeah, there's Thanks, Corey Glor, uh, voice of the Tulane Green Wave. Man. That's weird. Uh, That's I don't weird, know. Man. Very weird. So, yeah, I was saying during the break that uh, I've talked to former guys, and, and uh, Pac said he hated USF. They talked too much. He didn't like the way they play, all that stuff. Cam, you said uh, Tulane would not be high on your list of yeah, not on the right teams way. you enjoy. How about you, Matt? Who is, uh, I-, I guess, your favorite opponent to play against? Who did yeah. you like to beat? I would have to probably agree. You know, they're, Tulane's one of the teams year in, year out, where they're fighting against us for that conference title. Uh, I think that adds a little extra spark to the to when we play them. And, uh, you know, I'd say Houston's probably along those lines, even though, you know, this year was a little setback for them. But, 
um, they're usually w- right there with them. And uh, along with that, you know, just everybody's geared up for the NC State and, you know, Duke yep. and Carolina games. So um, those are always one to mark on the calendar and, you know, and, and, uh, emotions are high for sure. Where do you guys stand on the – like I'm a I'm a Braves Ronald Acuna fan. He like, he okay. hot dogs it a little bit after yes, a dinger. So where, like, where do you stand on that? What is appropriate – for a batter to do what is inappropriate uh what, what do you what do you think i think it's uh i think it's good for baseball I really do um you know the the pimping and, and all that stuff i think it is it is good for baseball um i think it's for the fans i think they enjoy things like that and um you know so i, I mean i i'm on board with at it. the same time yeah. when you strike a guy out exactly. yeah, like you when you get fired emotion exactly yeah. it's the same uh, thing so you know if someone pimps one off you you know i mean it is what it is part of the game i mean and the fans love it, so I'm especially in big it. moments. Like, I mean, if you're up ten runs yeah. and they pimp one off of you, it's like, come on, man. Right. But, yeah. Like, if you're tied up the ball game, like, you know, let's see it. You know, I, I want our guys to do that too, and mm-hmm. you know, big punch out. It's like that gets the crowd into it, and you know, makes baseball what it is. Uh, did you guys bring any spider tech with you? <laughs> so i don't want to turn this into a garrett cole moment here sunscreen and rosin <laughs> yeah, now i saw bauer talk, trevor bauer talking about that uh i don't know like what do you what's on your hand when you're pitching out there as a d1 pitcher you know with with me i because i'm more of a change-up guy so i mean i it's probably better for me if i don't use anything so i'd never you know yeah. use anything but you know fastball slider guy dominant you know you might see him use a little bit of something you know we'll see so I'll be honest. How about on those sliders, Matt? Yeah. What do you got? I'm honestly telling you the truth. I never used it. Like, I, I would put some rosin maybe on my forearm, which is totally legal. Um, and that's mainly just to stop the sweat from dripping down to my fingertips. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I never I never got into the sticky stuff. But, I mean, it's out there. So Even in the college game, it's out there? Oh, yeah, yeah. it's out there oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Major League Baseball trying to police it, which is funny. I think they're starting this weekend. So they made the announcement earlier this week. So it's like, guys, cheat all you want for the next five days, and then we're going to start checking balls and ejecting you and finding you. And I don't know if it's – hey, what do you guys think as pitchers? Like, are they going a little too far I mean, with the policing? Or? I feel like if you, if you can use pine tar and yeah. stuff for, you know, hitters so, so their grip doesn't slip, why can't exactly. pitchers use it, you know? With and, that, yeah. I mean, it's all for entertainment purposes anyways. Like, for a fan base, I don't know why they would get upset about it, but – um, I think it just adds adds another level to the game, you know. And um, if if you want to use it, I feel like you can, but I mean, it's not for everybody. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously, a lot of fans don't like you know pitching duels. So I mean, I guess that could be part of it. But <laughs> yeah, um, you I, and know, but for for me, me and him as pitchers, we love things like that. We love watching pitchers duels. Um, so no doubt, those games and look and and like doing PA. I love baseball, but I don't like being there for four hours and fifteen minutes. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> Give me a two-hour and fifty-minute yeah. game with some great pitching, and uh, that's fun to me. I mean, that's no, uh, yeah. high stakes; like every at bat counts. Uh, I like that more so than yeah. the the dinger fest. Yeah. Well, as a pitcher, you still got to make your pitches anyway, so it's not gonna help you throw strikes or right. <laughs> any of that. So, I mean, I don't. I think it's good. Cliff Godwin is a very big. He, he's he's old school, but yeah. he also. He doesn't like batting average. He likes quabs. Yeah. Uh, he always talks I mean, about I, the quality of bats, things like that. I'd agree with that. How yeah. high tech has it become now? How how high tech is ECU uh, baseball when it comes to like the spin rate and and all that stuff that you guys do? I would say you know as far as pitchers, uh, we we really don't get into that much, you okay. know often. Um, we have, we have other, track man. Yeah, we have but. track man, but it's not like you know some programs are all about it, and um, you mm-hmm. know. It's so, there if you want it, yeah, but it's there. You yeah. can check it out and look and see, you know, what you can do, and you know if you can, you know, get better with doing something. If you can, but you know, as far as you know, Coach G's about competing. Um, he thinks that's a number, you know, which it is. Um, you know, the spin rate and stuff will obviously help you, but you know, it's just if you yeah. don't have that mental side and you, you can't compete, then you know it doesn't matter what your spin rate is. So, but yeah, yeah we I mean, it's there for you, like he said, for the you know the taking if you want to look at it or if you want to you know see what you got going on yeah. but you know it's like it's a, i think coach dietrich said it best it's like a buffet like yeah you don't have to get everything you can pick and choose like what you want like you know like weighted balls you hear about that all the time you know pitchers use those um you know analytics and stuff like that you don't yeah. have, there's different ways you can go about it and just 
but at the end of the day uh, competing is just the number one thing yeah you guys talk about that a lot i don't think you can measure toughness maybe but cliff mm-hmm. gowan values that more oh, so yeah. than a lot yeah. of the other stats and stuff yeah it's part of our pirates mission mm-hmm. statement so it's uh something that we value heavily and um, i think the program will have it going forward as a guy who's been around here a long time like i'm a big ecu basketball fan i want to see them succeed and it it stinks to me that it doesn't feel like a program it feels like a different team every year baseball is the complete opposite of that where you have all kind of recent guys with with agnos and packard and brickhouse and those guys still you know being a part of the program but even cliff's old teammates being out there in the regional that is one thing and and you guys are going to be in the family forever it just feels like a program a true program where no matter who the faces are every year you know what they're about what it's going to be i love that yeah like i think uh you know after the charlotte game when we took you know obviously every game in the regional we took the jungle lap oh yeah you're taking a lap and you're seeing guys around there in the jungle that you played with like um i saw you know evan vol was out there i saw connor litton um davis davis yeah there's a hobo said he was going to the super Uh, hobo was that yeah (laughs) exactly yeah um so it's just like you know just like for me and matt you know we're always going to keep up with these guys um no matter you know you know how old we are so it's a family and it's part of the culture and that's what we love about this place matt bridges cam colmore hanging out can you guys do one more segment with us oh yeah for sure nothing to do no plans no uh yeah (laughs) just a little homework that's it all All right sounds good uh let's open up the booty bag chandler let's cut that music because we need to make somebody a winner right now on free beer friday here on pirate radio live Booty, 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 booty everywhere. Booty, 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 booty everywhere. You guys are too young for Bubba Sparks, probably, right? Uh, free Beer Friday today. We open up the booty bag. We got a 15-pack of 16-ounce Bud Light aluminum bottles, a Bud Light t-shirt, koozies, lunch for two at Tiebreakers, and a large two-topping pizza from Domino's. It can all be yours if you are caller number 12. Caller 12, 317-1250. We'll be uh, back with more with Cam and Matt right after this. Hey, Pirate fans, did you know there are thousands of special needs children and adults right here in our community that loves East U Athletics as much as you do? Robbie's Clubhouse is a local nonprofit organization that can turn your unused East U tickets into a fun day for a family with special needs. If you can't make it to the next Pirate game, simply call 1 800 DAL ECU and donate and designate your tickets for Robbie's Clubhouse. Go, Pirates! The best place in Greenville to unwind after work and have fun is A.J. McMurphy's. A.J.'s has daily food and drink specials and an awesome patio perfect for some outdoor dining. Stop by A.J.'s on Monday for open mic, music on the patio on Tuesday, sports trivia with me, Clip Brock, on Wednesday, and music bingo on Thursday. A.J. McMurphy's, Turnberry Square at Bell's Fork and on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. White Claw Hard Seltzer. A wave of refreshment. Crafted using our unique brew pure process. Made pure. Nothing tastes like White Claw Hard Seltzer. White Claw Hard Seltzer. Available in five fruit flavors, two grams of carbs, gluten free, and 100 calories. Find it at whiteclaw.com. White Claw Hard Seltzer. Nothing tastes quite like it. Proudly distributed by Coastal Beverage. Please drink responsibly. When a storm hits, you can count on Greenville Utilities. They put their emergency storm plan into action to restore power as quickly and safely as possible. If you experience an outage, call them toll-free at 1-855-767-2482. The automated hotline can handle a large number of calls at once, virtually eliminating busy signals so help can be on the way as fast as possible. Remember, GUC's emergency hotline number is 1-855-767-2482. This is Steven Igo. You've heard from me plenty on Pirate Radio Live and perhaps have read some of my work on hoistthecolors.net. Now, get an extension of our in-depth coverage on the Hoist the Colors podcast. From game previews to immediate post-game analysis to emergency podcasts for breaking news, we've got you covered. A cast of guest co-hosts from fans, former coaches, and other writers join me for two podcasts weekly to break down all things ECU athletics. Subscribe to Hoist the Colors now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. 
At Jimmy John's, we don't make sandwiches. We make the sandwich of sandwiches. We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day, because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. At U.S. Cellular, we see our customers as more than just customers. They're neighbors. When you switch to U.S. Cellular, you can get the new Samsung Galaxy S21 5G for free with no hidden requirements. As a neighbor, you deserve it. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Terms apply. See uscellular.com for details. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. Do you suffer from pain, anxiety, or sleeping issues? Eastern Healthcare has a solution for you. Eastern Healthcare is the premier CBD store with retailer quality products to help with any ailment you might have. They carry nationally recognized brands such as Curative's Delta 8, CBD Distillery, and Charlotte's Web with a wide variety of delivery systems. This is Adam from Eastern Healthcare. Come visit our store at 2245 Stansburg Road across from Vidit Hospital or call 227-4199. Eastern Healthcare. Wellness starts here. Pirate Radio. We'll strap it on with anybody, anywhere, it doesn't matter. I know this, I want to win or lose with the group that we have in our locker room. The Voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back to the show. For the latest breaking news, interesting stories, and awesome contests that can make you a winner, be sure to follow Pirate Radio on our social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at PR19. FM. Join the close to 50,000 followers today at PR927 FM. Now let's head back into the show. All right, actually, congratulations to Linda Morfitt of Winterville for winning our free beer giveaway today. And now let's head back into the show. Here is Clip Brock. All right, a Wintervillian winning. I'm a Wintervillian. Cam, you went to South Central. Central. Yep. Which was not a thing when I was graduating at DH Conley in 2000. But uh, South yeah, Central popped up and got really good at athletics. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Really good at basketball too. It's yeah, really great basketball. No team. doubt, no doubt. And uh, Matt, where are you from? I'm from Shelby, North Carolina. Okay. Shout out Crest High School. No, I grew yeah. up playing like basketball and golf and you know different stuff. But once we got to high school, just focused in on baseball. Same but you know, honestly, if I had to do it ever again, I'd probably play more. But different sports. But uh, I know Coach Coach Godwin loves the the multiple sports yeah. athletes. So. But it worked out. So, and uh, Coach Goblin likes bringing in guys that can do different things. We talked about your AB, and unfortunately, your non AB Cam. <laughs> touchy subject. But uh, the two way U got a lot of guys that yeah. he recruits. We've done it over the years, but that's got to be enticing to a uh, recruit. I would think it does. Oh, yeah, sure. and I you mean, even look at. Uh, I mean, Carson Wisenhunt. He came in as a two way guy. Um, Skylar Brooks, another yeah. one, and. Actually, Carson Wisner, he the first fall I got here, I was like, this guy can rake. He was he was raking. Has he and, had an AB? I don't uh, recall him he's hitting. He's a PO now. He's so a PO now, obviously. Dropped the bat, which I think it was the best out decision. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Skyler, like we we still don't kind of know what we have in him due to injuries uh, so far, right? Really, yeah. But he's he's a great player. You know, I great think he's guy. gonna he's gonna make some strides this year for sure. And uh, he can throw the ball, you know, up to 94, 95 miles per hour, and he's got some juice. So you saw the early home run he had this up numbers from that year and saw that Connor Norby hit like 190 and like it goes to show you that it, you don't have to come in and light the world on fire you grow as a player you get better every year so on that note who are the guys in the bullpen Cam and Matt that maybe we haven't heard a lot of yet that you think are going to have quality careers here at ECU yeah, um, I, I, pop names that popped in my head. I would say uh, Josh Gross. He's going to be a really good, good player here. Hot, high upside. Um, you got Danny Bill, um, Nick Logish. I mean, there's there's some names. Landon Gann. Landon Gann's going to be extremely. He well. He started finding a yeah. stride there about 
the Cincinnati series, which was a good outing for him, and I think he's going to build off of that. And but yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of guys out there, you know. May he'll be back, and mm-hmm. um, he's 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 pitching some big moments too. So I think they're going to be well rounded next year for sure. And Did, a, you, you know, as a freshman, all it takes is you know getting that one big outing and you know a big situation to just get that confidence going, and then you just you just go from there and just take strides from there. We saw you guys. I, be, I believe both of you guys make spot starts, right? Yes, I made one at uh, Cincinnati, and his was in the conference tournament. Yeah. So, yeah. so and and you got your role as a a bullpen guy. Did you ever like when you came to ECU? Were you thinking like I'm a starter? I'm a bullpen? I'm a closer? Yeah. I, when I came in, I didn't. You know, I just I didn't know what I was going to be. I just came <laughs> in and figure out as we get there. So, yeah. Yeah. Mal was more bullpen, I think, from the get go. Um, but you know, we we tried starting. I think my sophomore year fall, but just found that I was more effective out of the bullpen and, and just owning my role from that perspective. And it's got to be fun knowing any night you could go in because you guys got a ton of yeah. appearances. Yep, that was a, definitely a fun part about it, just being ready to go every day. And it's a little bit different routine-wise, you know, um, from a starter to a reliever. But it's, it's a lot of fun just having the opportunity to be be hot for the day. So. Talking to Matt Bridges, Cam Colmore. Here's the uh, the typical favorite moment at ECU. Cam, uh, do you have one in mind that is your favorite moment on the field? Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, dogpiling all three of the regionals. Um, going back to the UVA, can I have more than one? Go I ahead. I'll, I'll allow it. Do you use louder now? <laughs> yeah, sure. Go um, yeah, dogpiling the UVA was, you know, special. Oh, Our man. freshman year, that was really special. And then, you know, in 19, dogpiling. I would just say, you know, the dog pile moments for me just stood out. But this one, right, this past one right here, um, you know, the dog pile when, um, you know, we won at home a few weeks back was, if I had to, you know, say one, I would say that just because, like we talked about earlier, you know, not having the crowd, you know, for a full year and then just, you know, dog piling with my best friends, you know, in front of, you know, all those fans, which I haven't seen it like that, you know, that electric and that long. And that would probably be, you know, the, the best moment for me was just year, just because us not, you know, knowing if we were going to come back or not, you know, not knowing if we were going to be given another chance. So that's definitely what pops out to me. You bring all those up, too. And, and Matt, you mentioned earlier, like, when you're a freshman, you don't know if you're going to be able to experience that again. Well, you were able to, but all three of them were, like, so different. The, the Virginia really kind of came out of nowhere. Watkins had that big homer, and then you're, you're able to win the next day and win it. And then you have to go through the loser's bracket – uh, in 19 and come all the way play all those games come back and win and then you go one two three this year like they're all regional wins but they're all different right yeah they're all unique in their own way you know and they're all great memories and wouldn't trade them for the world you know i think this one like cam said was probably my most favorite as well just from the toughness and resilience that ecu baseball showed from bouncing back from the previous year was was special and not not knowing if we were going to have the chance to come back, and uh, I think I think that was probably my coolest moment for sure too. Yeah, and we hadn't, hadn't really brought up the the adversity you faced as far as having a season canceled on you, and also all the uh, swabs up the nostrils oh, yeah. and stuff you guys had to go <laughs> through. A week. Yeah, I mean, just brutal. And and how how cool was it, Cam? You, you've mentioned it, but to go from okay basically no fans and and swabs up the nose to like back to normal i hate it took a full season yeah. to get there but you finally got a little taste of it oh yeah and, and going back in you know february at the beginning of the season you know we didn't we had no idea if we were ever going to get you know 50 percent right more you know and just to get 100 in the season it was just was so special just because like i said you know we had no idea you know we were just taking it day by day and you know worrying about ourselves and you know if the fans could come if they could show up there you know they'll be there. we knew they would we, we knew when you know they were able to come they would you know fill up clark leclerc and you know the best fans in the nation so yeah matt uh and and you talked about you know you didn't know if you'd be able to pick up a ball again that had to be a weird feeling i guess leaving that wilmington game in 20 and being like wait yeah. uh, so this is it weird time. well it and, turned into like you know what we're on the bus like seeing we're supposed to play columbia that weekend obviously they shut down first so we're like oh man did you see what happened we're like on yes. the way to wilmington like going through our heads like i don't know if we're gonna have three games to play this weekend kind of like i don't want to scrimmage each other <laughs> you know i want to play some comp- real competition and then you know what the next day big it, 12 con- like they, all they, the dominoes yeah, yeah. And, yep, and then and it's like man i don't know if we're gonna play again so it it, it happened 
really fast but uh luckily you know the ncaa granted us another year and we're able to finish off what we started it was, uh, it was great to, to watch you guys this year and uh throughout your careers Do, who are your uh who are your favorite ball players to watch pitchers to to watch right now i would say jacob degrom um, a good one to, to uh, I thought you were going to say Walker Bueller, man. I oh, do love some Walker Bueller. But, you know, after you know, after the Vanderbilt series, you know, I don't know how much I'm going to But I do love watching him, too. But, you know, Jacob DeGrom is just special to watch. <laughs> hey. Who do you like, Matt? Oh, man. I'm a big Brace fan, though. Um, I would have to say DeGrom's probably the best in the league um, to, to watch as far as electric, electric stuff. Um, Hoping he has a Soroka back at some point. Yeah, Watch him I know, again. I know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if, if anybody, I know is left-handed, but from a Braves perspective, I like watching Max Fried. Yeah. And flipping that big breaking ball is something I can relate to. So Those guys you mentioned, like, they have the talent, but you can also see the – you always you use the word compete a lot. They compete yeah, on the mound. They do. They do. Some bulldogs, uh, for sure. All right, so uh, – I don't know. What are you guys doing this weekend? Like, you haven't had a weekend Actually, off in forever. Yeah, leaving so, to go to the beach. Tomorrow. All right, good. Good so for you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a week out with the parents, and I think Cam's gonna join me. And all right, for uh, he's coming what Monday? Monday, yeah. Something like spend, that. But. Spend Father's Day with my dad this weekend, and then I'll go up, head up there on Monday. So yeah, is yeah, that got the what? friends going, and we'll have a good time. So. Is it weird not to be like stretching or long tossing? <laughs> you know, the normal routine yeah, you've been yeah, in for all these years. A little weird. It does feel a little weird. <laughs> I get back. Uh, I get back working out here soon take so your we'll gloves see. to the beach and you can get some throws in if you'd like trade it for a golf club <laughs> all right yeah that might be a little better actually <laughs> hey guys great to uh to get you in here man oh, i appreciate yeah. it y'all are awesome and uh i uh, enjoyed watching you play and interacting a little bit on social media maybe you can do that more now that cliff doesn't have your phones <laughs> confiscated uh, I oh guess. yeah i, I checked out the umpire thing after uh we lost that second <laughs> yeah. game to vanderbilt i was checking that out <laughs> had a little fun with that uh but man uh, you guys are great representatives of pirate nation we'll certainly talk to you again down the road and uh wish you guys the best in uh in your lives now we appreciate yeah. it, right? thanks, thanks for having us on yeah, thank you for having us on yes sir matt bridges cam colmore a couple of pirate greats here in the pirate radio studios We'll talk to Gavin Williams on uh, Tuesday. I don't know if he's as talkative as you guys, so I'm gonna have to come up with a lot of <laughs> he's questions. He's great at interviews. Is he? Yeah. yeah. All right. He's got, he's got a lot better. Night, he's night and day to what he used to be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've met his dad, who's a lot like his dad. Reminds me of people I grew up with in there in Winterville, kind of like old farmer yeah. dudes, oh, yeah. like cool guy. Like so, looking forward to that chat coming up Tuesday, five o'clock with Gavin Williams. Uh, let's get our final break in. We'll come back and wrap up this Friday edition of Pirate Radio Live after this. The whole family's home. It's almost time to eat again, but you don't feel like cooking again. So close the microwave, put away that box of instant whatever, drop your spatula, pick up the phone, and get a big bow box delivered with eight pieces of legendary fried chicken, fluffy buttermilk biscuits, fixins, and tea. Because no one ever said a home-cooked meal has to be cooked at home. Just tap your favorite delivery app for a big bow box at your front door. It's bow time. Hey Pirate Nation, Lindsey Gray here with Carolina Caliber. In 1960, my granddaddy started his firearm business right here in Eastern NC. Still family owned and operated, we have the area's largest selection for outdoor shooting sports and accessories and are one of the nation's top firearm dealers. At Carolina Caliber, we have everything you need from hunting, home defense, and personal protection, including a wide variety for ladies and youth. We buy, sell, and trade. It's a time-honored tradition. Visit us at Carolina Caliber on Fire Tower Road in Winterville. Hey, Pirate fans, this is Cliff Godwin. Summer is here, and I want to invite your son to attend Cliff Godwin Youth Camps. We will offer three sessions the weeks of June 28th, July 12th, and July 26th. All camps will be held at Clark LeClaire Stadium, and campers will get baseball instruction from members of the 2021 ECU baseball team. Campers will also play games, and each camp ends with our famous Pirate Slip and Slide. Full day and half day sessions are offered. For more information, visit CliffGodwinBaseballCamp.com. See you there. Go Pirates. 
In studio today with Natalie Edwards from AG Home Solutions and EXP Realty. Natalie, you have a unique partnership because you work in the real estate market and also work with AG Home Solutions. How does that help your clients? So it's interesting, the trends that we're currently seeing in real estate. Inventory is so low. We're seeing a high percentage of folks who want to renovate their spaces, perhaps add a home office because now they're working from home. And so they come to us with those design ideas and we're able to help them navigate through that. What other trends are you seeing in the marketplace right now? Yes, so we're definitely seeing increased needs for home office space, folks being able to do virtual learning from home. So how can we redesign that space so it's functional? We're also seeing folks that do want to take advantage of this being a seller's market. And so they want to freshen up that space and get it ready to put on the market. And so we can come in and provide them with some good guidance on things that they might want to consider before they list their property. For real estate or remodeling, how can folks contact you? 252-947-2526 or aghomesolutions.com. You've worked hard to start your business and working even harder to make it successful. And that's why it's important to have a bank in your corner when you need them. This is former ECU baseball player Ashley Capps from Select Bank and Trust. And as the business world throws you curveballs, we're here to be responsive to your needs. Our team of local bankers can make local decisions and cares about you, the customer. Get the business services that are right for your business today with Select Bank and Trust. Bank local, bank select, member FDIC. University PC Care has been the Pirate Nation's go-to IT expert since 2006. Your office deserves a proactive tech support approach instead of always reacting to issues after the damage is done. You need BizCare. BizCare tech support and cybersecurity plans keep you ahead of potential issues and much safer from cyber threats like ransomware. What's at your office? Call William today to schedule your free BizCare consultation or learn more at universitypccare.com. You demand perfection. That's why you drive the perfect car. Okay, maybe it's not exactly perfect, but it's perfect to get you to Domino's for their perfect $7.99 carryout deal. Carry out any three-topping pizza or a 10-piece order of wings, smothered in delicious sauces like hot buffalo, garlic parmesan, and honey barbecue, just $7.99 each. Demand the perfect carryout deal at Domino's. Carry out only. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, and charges may vary. Excludes XL and specialty pizzas. Crust availability varies by size. This is Coach Donnie Kirkpatrick, Office Coordinator for ECU Football, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding Pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Did you miss the show on Pirate Radio? Listen to all of Pirate Radio's archive local programming by subscribing to us on Apple Podcast. Subscribe today by going to, to the podcast app on your iPhone or Apple device and search for Pirate Radio Audio Archives. Now let's head back into the show. Here's your host, Clip Rock. All righty. Talk to a couple of Pirate greats on our Bud Light ECU report on this Friday. Great to chat with Cam Colmore and Matt Bridges. And hey, they're hanging around. They don't have a lot to do. They said they'd come back on. So uh, we might talk to them uh, again later on this summer. We're planning to uh, have Gavin Williams on coming up Tuesday at 5 o'clock. Looking forward to hearing from the big fella as he gets ready for the Major League Baseball draft next month. Keep uh, in tune with our social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If there's any breaking news regarding the ECU baseball program over the weekend, we will have it for you right there. Uh, Thanks for tuning in on a free beer Friday edition of Pirate Radio Live. Chandler, good job on the audio side of things. Shirley, have a uh, good week next week, and we'll see you a couple of Mondays from now. We'll be back with you Monday at 3 o'clock on an all-new edition of Pirate Radio Live. Until then, I'm Clip Rock. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to Pirate Radio Live, an exclusive presentation of the voice of the Pirate Nation. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington.